What's happening, guys? If you love this podcast and you really want to support us, you can go to haveawaypod.com. You can get yourself some merch, something like this hoodie, something like that T-shirt. There's plenty of stuff for you to go and have a look at there. There's also links so you can buy tickets to the Have A Word live shows and also tickets to mine and Dan's tour shows if you want to come and see us do stand-up. That's all at haveawaypod.com. We also do an extra episode of the podcast every week on patreon.com slash have a word pod. Sign up on Patreon, get the exclusive Patreon episode. There's also some discounts on merch, discount on live tickets, but the extra episode is only on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash have a word pod. Bye, Felicia. Bye. Bummels. <laughs> Look at that. A nice, <laughs> clean, crisp bummels. Uh, how are you? Good. You look nice in your Borussia Dortmund uh, hoodie. Nice, isn't it? I bought this. It's not a hoodie, um, it's a tracky top. Tracky top. I bought it about 18 months ago. And 18 months ago, the size of this was uh, ambitious. <laughs> <laughs> it took 18 months for me to whip it out the wardrobe and be like, does this fit? And even now, it's like, sort of. <laughs> which, which, which member of staff at Borussia Dortmund would still get the kit, but definitely not be one of the players? You know, like... Uh, I'm the uh, I'm the bus driver. <laughs> <laughs> BVB on my left tit, Puma on my right tit. Talking to Carl, like Puma, and if they ever want to sponsor us, I'll take this back. A bit of a shit brand, aren't they? Um, like I wouldn't wear this if it wasn't for the Borussia Dortmund badge, yeah, because it would look a little bit like witness. But they're they're knocking out some money, aren't they? In the last ten years, they've gone up from like some okay kits they've done Arsenal now they're doing Man City who else have they got massive have they, have they got like like they've started getting big European clubs so they're throwing no, money they've at they've got it. clubs that want to be big European clubs like Manchester City um, right alright let's not make it political but I, yeah. <laughs> although you're playing to the fucking crowd aren't you on, on today's episode but um, yeah I don't I'm not a big fan of Puma I can never get over that Cameroon kit from about 10 years ago that they basically made into like a, a fucking starter bra because they were like, like the what? camp it was skin tight do you remember it was it 2010 um was it not earlier it was well, 2006 was it before, world cup was it, it was like a vest top like wasn't spray it on. yeah it was like a spray on cameroon kit which to be fair this feels dodgy a lot of, a lot of the cameroonian lads can can pull off do you know yeah. what i mean I'm not sure the Republic of Ireland. <laughs> you know, like when, when who are like the, the lower league teams, like the Faroe Islands, where you've got like a milkman, like who's third generation Viking. Yeah, you've got to be fit as fuck. Hungers is Hunders is the uh, he's the uh, deputy head of the of the school and the left back. <laughs> he can't have a spray on Faroe Islands Puma top, can he? The Cameroonian lads, in good nick, Ca Cameroonian. Cameroonian, the camos. Can't call them the camos. Ca Why can't you call them camos? Because I feel like it's just it, it's the runers. The runers. <laughs> you you make you're trying to make it racist when it's not the Cameroonies, the runos, the Cameroos, the cam cams, the old rune dogs. I think I've eaten scored, but camos. Why? You are making up. They're ca <laughs> How do you know? Because camo to me means camouflage. Right. So what you're saying is, it's like... No, no one can see them because they're, they're black. Camouflaged. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't get that. <laughs> That's what you thought That's immediately, exactly wasn't it? That's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. Right. The yeah. camos. Yeah. You can't... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you look all camo over there. Like, you can't... Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can see... I can kind of see the problem. But I mean, yeah. where are they the playing? Where are they playing the football? The Runos. The Runos. Yeah, yeah. The Camrus. Let's let's stop. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's stop I, before we are kicked off of YouTube. I I think Puma make some good stuff amidst a load of shit that, like, you know, you know, like I always feel like every Puma shoe is so close to being like, oh, we used to sponsor Ferrari, and now Polish people wear the shoes. Like it's, <laughs> oh, it's all a bit. It's all a bit one up from Lonsdale, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's like the Lonsdale of the the good brands. Like Lonsdale and Gola and Fila, they're like conference brands, aren't they? But like the top like Puma is sort of competing 
with Adidas and Nike and like the Under Armors of the world, innit? Right, so hang on. Puma are we wants gonna... to be with them and it just isn't. Are we going to do sports brand league table? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. If you so were. basically, Adidas and Nike are Real Barca. That's the Classico, innit? They're Liverpool. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and who's the other one? Let's not do so it. So Nike, not... I think Nike are top. And Adidas and Nike are right up there, aren't they? It's close, but Nike are top. Right. Because of the trainees. Mm. I pref- I'm, if I had to be sponsored as an athlete, this doesn't the contract doesn't get offered a lot, but I'd go at it. I think we've spoken about You look about like it. a shop putter. What? <laughs> you, if you were going to be anything, you'd be a shop putter. Oh, fuck, how much weight have I put on <laughs> that I'm a shop putter? You look like a male Miss Trunchbull. Oh, at least from, I'm, at from least from I'm male. <laughs> you look like a female shop putter. <laughs> oh, she's a big girl. You know Miss Trunchbull from Matilda? Yeah. Yeah, when she like... Yeah, that's who I look like. Like the male version of that. Yeah. Fuck off. You look like Danny DeVito, Matilda's dad. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was quite pleased with that one. It's not often in, in normal conversation you can slam someone with a Danny DeVito. <laughs> uh, and then what are we talking below that? It's Puma, New Balance, Under Armour. You were saying if you could be sponsored, you go with Adidas. Oh, I'm an under Adidas man, yeah, I think. Yeah. I was until recently and then I'm Nike now. All right, okay. I thought you genuinely meant you'd been sponsored by them. I was like, Adam's had a stroke. <laughs> I <laughs> was, you know, but I've retired from playing now. <laughs> Nike, Adidas, Under Armour. Oh, I mean, way Under Armour. New yeah. Balance, Under Armour. N- no. What? New- no. You- you well, ju- Under think- Armour are a long way off Adidas and Nike. Yeah. But they're probably above New Balance. I say that New Balance's on- shoes oh, are... Wo- you know. Would I'm, you wear a new? You're wearing an Under Armour top now. Would you wear a New Balance top? Yeah. Would you? Yeah. I I think the I think shoes. Is judging good. on boots and shoes, that's how you go with it. You yeah. wouldn't wear New Balance boots or Under Armour boots. So there's a big gap. Between. You mean like footy boots? Hang on, we're getting a bit in the weeds here. Who who have you ever seen walking around in Under Armour trainers? Yeah, mm. loads of people. Y- n- no, though. Not yeah. good ones. Yeah, Under Armour are a good brand. Not I as good as New Balance for sure. Under Armour and New Balance are very on a very level, but Under Armour just mm. right. Then I put Puma in there with them. Mm. I see Puma's below both of them for me. Well, they're in and around, aren't they? It's a You'd big... wear a pair of New Balance pants. You would not buy a pair of Pumas. I had a pair of Pumas not so long ago. About a decade, probably. Uh, yeah. Who's who's up there with? What about Asics? Quite like Asics. I've got a pair and they're nice. Is that the OA? A S I C S. That's how you spell <laughs> no, it. It looks like an O on the brand. It's an A. Right, okay. Yeah, no, they're like. Uh, lower again. Yeah, they're with Feeler and that for me. Oh, yeah, Feeler. Feeler's on the way back. Yeah? Yeah. Ale- Alessi. Feeler's on the way Ale- back. Alessi. Yeah? No. Deodora. Alessa, that lad. <laughs> Hummel. Theodora. Yeah, yeah, sub the Hummel. Hummel but you know around. what? You know, with the Lessian Feeler and Hummel, there's that bit of international about them. Like, oh, they're foreign. Umbro, you're like, oh, fuck off. I'm not. Oh, shit, we've forgotten Reebok. Reebok are just above Puma. Reebok's fluid, though, isn't it? Mate. Reebok yeah. moves around. Reebok's over Under Armour. I'm having that. No, absolutely not. For are you foot, sp- for wait, footwear? Wait, yeah. The fuck? Uh, I don't know. Right, who's in? Who's with? Who's below Umbro in the fucking? Hello, we do sport. Feeler, Gola, and oh no, Feeler are way above Gola. Yeah, Feeler's on the way back. Honestly, they are. Kappa, I'd put with Feeler. Kappa, yeah. Hey, Kappa have got a Premier League team or two. Kappa all right. beautiful football kits though. All right, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Rock bottom of everything, like below Georgia as the zone is Lonsdale. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yes. No, it's th- this is how bad Lonsdale are. You'd be better going on eBay and getting one of the fake brands like we're the four stripes. Like, yeah, I hate Lons. Everyone hates Lonsdale, don't they? Yeah. If you if you see someone Slazinger, <sighs> like Lonsdale's come with an alarm that like you know like on a trolley when you get to the edge of as the car park and it locks. Lonsdales have them when you go within a hundred yards of a school. You just can't. <laughs> <laughs> you, can't you can't go near the school in a pair of Lonnie. Your trainers are beeping again. <laughs> <laughs> My nan did me with a pair of four stripes once. Yeah. I didn't realise until I was in the street. I mean, out of context. Did me. I mean, she lied to me. She bought me a pair yeah. of shoes, white. So I do white Adidas. Put them on. I was in the street and someone went, lad, they've got four stripes on. And they were Ador. 
Oh. That? So they got literally thrown at me, Nan. And I was like, <laughs> so she, oh, she did. She bought me K-Swiss tongue twisters to say sorry. K-Swiss was sick back in the day. K-Swiss tongue t- twisters were fire. Yeah. Pair of, everyone had K-Swiss all black for school for a while. In our school, it was like a thing. You weren't allowed to wear trainees, but there was... No, it was Stan Smith, lad. It wasn't K-Swiss. Th- they were for a bit. And then Stan Smiths came in and they took over the game, but you weren't allowed to wear trainers. But, like, everyone would try and get away with wearing all black trainers. So there were certain ones that you could get away with. The... There was Prada for a while, weren't there? And then they banned Prada because Prada came out with like black trainer like shoes, which were defo shoes because they were Prada. They're not a sports brand, really, the designer. So everyone <laughs> everyone was wearing like. No, you can't show me out of the class, miss. They're fucking Prada. <laughs> <laughs> they're Gucci, you bell end. But like then everyone was getting like black. Like I had a black pair of Prada webs. And then, like, everyone in school was like, if you didn't have them on, you were getting bullied. Because, like, what the fuck are you doing here with your fucking kickers, lad? I'm not a big flan. Fat flan. I'm not a big flan. <laughs> I've said it. I'm not a big fan of the all black trainers. I think you might as well be like, I'm a scally ninja. I just don't. <laughs> yeah, but for school. My shoes are the Batmobile. I think you look like a fucking <laughs> nonce. Mm, you can't see me coming in But it's night. better for school than wearing like shit flickers. If you wore Reebok Classics, no one would go near you because you were hard. They would like yeah. the hard. Black Reebok Classics. But the best shoes to play footy in when you were a kid were flat footed kickers. The fucking absolute power you could get with a flat top. Do you know what I'm, do you know the shoes I'm talking yeah. about? Like the, pa- if you hit that, if you hit a ball with your non-existent laces with those <laughs> shoes on, <laughs> It was like Adriano on Pro Evolution 2003. <laughs> it was just an absolutely unstoppable shot. Like a toy with Rockport on. Yes! Our school. Blow the ball up. Mate, our school. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you even got anywhere near anything that looked like a trainer. They were like fucking mental about that, our school. Stan Smiths were good to be for that leather though, shoes. Think. Like Clarks. If you were hard, you had Rockports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pods. Do you remember pods? Yeah, you, you got pushed in a bin if you wore pods. No one looked good in pods. <laughs> Hello, I'm wearing pods. You're like, oh, someone didn't spend the extra dollar. See, they were all black Stan Smiths. You'd have got, they're basically the, just the pumps that little girls wear for gymnastics, but with laces on them. <laughs> but no, the fucking pride, you will not have been allowed to wear them. They're not proud school. of their Adidas. That, that, you can't go anywhere near that at school. That See, we, school. we got away with them, didn't we? Yeah, I Oh, Stan when Smiths. you feel for the kids when they're just. You know when people are like, parents are like, and oh, we don't do brands, and we're just having none, nothing to do with it. You're, you're like, I don't want to be one of them guys like, he's got to have everything, just a fucking, yeah, Rockport, he's having a fucking lovely watch. You know, like, I'm, I'm not, like, you don't do that. But the parents were like, I just don't buy into it. And, you know, they'll get through it. And you're like, oh, you don't know. It's hard going to school with shit clobber in it and you're like oh god this I is got, fucking awful I got really lucky with that as a kid because we were always fucking skins like we had no money whatsoever but my auntie knew a guy who got loads of black stuff here we go so I always had Armani stuff Hugo Boss Adidas they weren't real but they fucking looked real how much did they cost them? it would be like 8 quid for a t-shirt no but what was your famous saying what do you mean remember oh I love it how he knows I don't know, I don't know this, what you're on about 220 or something no that was real Oh, was it? That was real. I Go bought. On. I bought. My mum bought me a full outfit. One year, she had like. <laughs> <laughs> I just literally saw you in my head walking into school with an all white Prada suit. Like, <laughs> yeah. turns out year seven's going to be a motherfucker. My mum, like, I was about to say, come into some money. I don't think she come. In, I think she won like a grand on a scratch card or something. <laughs> 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 I don't think she like. Came into mummy. Money. Fucking life changing this for us kids. <laughs> but like, me mum, her life was her kids, just me and our Jack. So she won that and she was like, right, I'm going to treat you. She's got 500 quid each and we're going to go and get you some nice clothes. And I was like, I'm spending all of it on one fucking thing. I didn't quite do that. But she took me to Hugo Boss in the Met Quarter and I got a pair of Hugo Boss combat pants, a Hugo Boss t-shirt and a lovely Hugo Boss zip-up jacket. 
and it was 260 quid, right? <laughs> and then on own clothes day in school, I wore that whole outfit to school. And my mates were like, who the fuck do you think you are wearing all Hugo Boss? And I went, fuck off, like, it was 260 quid this. And my nickname for three, and I know I've had a lot of these and they're all real. <laughs> my nickname for like three years was 260. Like I would just be walking down the corridor and you'd just hear me mate just 260, 260. <laughs> 260! I don't want no more! <laughs> 260! <laughs> Nate, you had so many nicknames that like, people had to keep a little file of facts of like, we're gonna rip rope. You were not low visibility at your school. Like, hang on, what should we call him today? We did 260 last week. Yeah, I want no more. Yeah, we did that yeah, yesterday. That was real gear. That was that Who was genuinely 260 quid. The visual of that is you were an Albanian cocaine dealer. <laughs> Just in sliders, like, what do you want? Fucking There was loads of like selling. Do you know the way we used to tr- like Lacoste trackies were big when I was a little kid. Like between like the ages of like four and maybe like 12. That about right, you reckon? Yeah. Like you had to have a Lacoste trackie and you would get it from St. John's Market. And there was a way that people tested whether your Lacoste trackie was real. <laughs> I just want you to see whether you can guess what the test for a real Lacoste trackie was. You know the you know what Lacoste is? You know yeah, the brand? Yeah. yeah, the little crocodile. So how do you think, like people would come up to you and inspect your trackie and there was a way they would be able to tell whether you whether you're trying to feel not look at him. Is it what? something to do with trying to scratch the the crocodile off? No. no. Go on. You count how many teeth the crocodile had. <laughs> oh, I knew I knew it was the crocodile. <laughs> Pin him down! Pin him down! Get the fucking magnifying glass. Oh. How many teeth was real? I can't I think like four, six or something. Ah, you fucking five teeth nonce. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But that was like the equivalent of having three stripes on your Adidas trainers. Do you know what I mean? You have to have the right amount of crocodile teeth. <laughs> it's so true. It's it's so true, so true. Yeah. How much would you love? If you, I'd love a picture of him in the full Hugo Boss fucking cocaine dealer. I've probably got it somewhere. Oh, God. That would be beautiful. Just if that was your profile picture for one day. I've defo got a picture of me in my Lacoste trackie. Defo. I remember getting my first Adidas shell suit and thinking I was a fucking baller. Tell he's a wool sometimes, can't oh. you? Oof. Oh, shell suit was scouse as fuck just before our time. It's a tracky. Tell. No, it was, it was called a shell suit, wasn't it? Yeah, but it? I've never used that term in my life. I've never bought one. Yeah, the only thing is with trackies, everyone had trackies and tracky bottoms, but shell, they did get called shell suits because they were a different feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The material, when you say when they tracky, got invented, you mean like this, don't you? No, no, no. When I mean tracky, I mean like that. So what do you mean by a shell suit? Shell suits came out and they were this weird, like papery fucking material. That's oh. why they got called shell suits. Right, That's okay. a tracky. We, like, mate, I, I've got some pictures. But from this it. is tracky as well, isn't it? If you had a pair of pants in this, that's a tracky. Tracky bottoms. Tracky bottoms, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like tracky in my head is tracksuit. Yeah. So that's it literally is a tracksuit. Yeah. When shell suits came out... <laughs> It was around like uh, World Cup 1990 where England, oh, that fucking kit is still one of my favourites ever. Do you know how old were you were then? You weren't born. Yeah. I get it. <laughs> the f- fucking. Tell us about it, Grandad Daniel. Oh, it's a different time. <laughs> P- Peter Shilton was in <laughs> Mark, you, yeah, centre back. You were super young then, though. You were in like year nine or something. I was 28. <laughs> <laughs> 28. Love gonna move it. I love that fucking. That was my first memory of that World Cup. And I'm, this sounds like I'm trying to link it back, but it absolutely is not bullshit. My first memory of that World Cup is Cameroon. I think they played Argentina in the opening game in the San Siro. I cannot remember football before this. I think maybe I've got some weird memories of like the 1989 Cup final, which I think is, I think was Everton Liverpool. Was at 87. I've got some blurry memories. My, my actual first memory is Maradona's uh, Argentina in the San Siro, which is Inter and AC San Siro, playing uh, Cameroon. And they had a lad called Roger Miller. And he did the fucking little dance. It, it, like, if I won money, and you know you're talking about, like, what you'd do with money, and people are like, I buy property. I would go on eBay and start buying fucking bare 1990 World Cup Adidas kits. And I think that's why I'm an Adidas man. That fucking Adidas Argentina kit was so cool. I love all that. The Adidas <laughs> Holland kit from two years before. Oh, do you know fit. the last World Cup? When was the last World Cup? Two years ago. Two years ago, yeah. Me and him went to London, right? Russia, all fair and above board. Oh, yeah, no, so he bought... 
Um, you know the last Nigeria kit? Do you remember like the hype about it? Yes, cool. So he got it from some blag website, didn't you? What's it yeah. called? Uh, DH Gate. Yeah, there's some website that from China you can get like any footy kit for like seven quid. <laughs> yeah, and you see the adverts, and for some reason it's slightly pixelated over the Nike logo. You're like, <laughs> well, what's on the laptop? You're like, it looks legit in person, though, yeah, doesn't it? I mean, footy tops are dead cheap after like that kit was like that top was so in demand. It was like two hundred pound for the top if you were lucky, and I got it basically yeah. replica for seven quid. It was like a hipster. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. a bit hipster, yeah. but he was wearing it as we were walking around London. And I reckon we were there for two days, weren't we? Yeah. I reckon well into double figures in central London, where as you all know, no one fucking talks to anyone. You look at the floor, you get on the tube, you open the paper, you get off, and you go home. How many Nigerian or black people just stopped you and were like? Can I get a selfie with you in that kit? Like 10 to 15. <laughs> we get 100 <laughs> yards down Oxford Road and someone will go, oh my God. <laughs> I knew you'd do that. Oh I was getting God. excited because I knew. He has got this shit done. Can I have a photo with you? Oh my God. I do not give a fuck about you in any way. I want a picture of a white man <laughs> wearing this top. I am going to send it. You were asking him where he got it from. I did an interview. Remember? They were yeah. like, uh, so how do you think Nigeria are going to do in the World Cup? I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. Some black fella stopped him and was like, hey, can we do an interview for my YouTube channel? Nigeria TV, we're just walking around. <laughs> Painless kid ever. <laughs> that is so funny. I fucking hated that World Cup. I tried to boycott it. Why? Because I fucking hate Russia. Oh, I, bet, I bet they were fucking gutted. I fucking hate it. Hang I, on, this, I, fella, this fella's telling and Nottingham's not on. My he mate, hasn't got it on. My mate Ben thought it was the funniest thing. They are, and this isn't individual Russians. This is that government and that horrible cunt that I've Vladimir, talked about. I just let you know, I'm still fully on board. Yeah, love you. Nasty, yet. Don't hate me. cheating, homophobic, murderous, fucking rat Vladimir Putin. Right? <laughs> I hate him. They, they li- <laughs> wow. They are- <laughs> They've literally just tried to poison the fucking the the what's he called the the opposition leader allegedly right they cheated all the way through the social Olympics allegedly yes and good we do very well at uh, ice skating I got fucking eight year olds like mm, going to do well for Mother Russia <laughs> allegedly very very fast <laughs> Russian athlete. And then, and then we're like, yeah, so basically if you're gay in the street, you get beaten the fuck, you get the shit kicked out of you. You can't marry, you've got no rights. The democracy's all over the shop. Let's give them a World Cup. <laughs> Fucking brilliant idea. I hated it. I'm dead, I was dead against it. What's your face for? The next one's in Qatar. I'm not, I'm not watching that shit either. But I tell you what, this is the first time I've tried to take an even remotely political stance with football. And that's the World Cup where England are fucking tremendous. So I was like, oh, I'm not watching it, not watching it. Semi-finals. I started watching it at the semis and they lost. <laughs> so sorry about that, everyone. That was partly my fault. Should have just kept so to the boycott. you're not going to watch any of the Qatar? What? The, n- no. Why? Because it's fucking horrible. I know it's horrible, but like, if you don't watch it, doesn't that mean all the people who've died building the stadiums have died for nothing? Oh, yes, you're so right. You're so right. Well, listen, I joined the Nazi party <laughs> because I didn't want the Holocaust to be in vain. <laughs> Fucking good thinking. Good thinking. <laughs> There's no context, have a word. FIFA. <laughs> FIFA are the dirtiest, horriblest cunts. They're for sale. And and, and, and when everyone gets there, and it's got to be in winter, because we've sold the World Cup to somewhere that's batshit warm in June and July, and you're like, oh no, it's fucking weird. I've got my Christmas due on Tuesday. It's the semi finals. I've got to finish my. How mental is it going to be going? I've got to finish the Christmas shopping. The World Cup finals on fucking the 24th. <laughs> Disgusting. Who's in the semis? Well, it's China versus. <laughs> it's China versus Russia versus the China B team versus. This shell BP. What the fuck? I ate it. I can't wait, me. Hi, Vlad. How you doing, mate? <laughs> <laughs> I really went in hard. Though. See, I hate international footy because it breaks <sighs> up the Premier League season. And I hate the friendlies and I hate the qualifiers. The World Cup's sick. I don't boycott anything, though. Like, I know I should, but it's just effort in it. I boycott the sun and that's it. Yeah, to be fair, though, that did time well with me getting a bit pissed off with watching England after 25 years of being like, it, it wasn't just Russia. I was getting a bit sick. Like, if the NFL got sponsored by fucking Voldemort, I'd be like, well, do you know what I mean? 
it's very entertaining. I'm like, I've, it is partly because I was getting pissed off with it, but I'm not into Qatar. So when you were a kid, did you did you wear labels and shit? Yeah, I had my shell suit. Adidas. What was it? Adidas. Adidas, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I used to get all sorts of me because my auntie would sell these T-shirts like 10, 12 quid and I'd get them for like a bit, bit of discount. Where like was eight. she getting them from? A man. <laughs> a man. His name was John. Your mum or your nan? My auntie. Your auntie. My dad's sister. My auntie Maisie. Now. My auntie Carol did it as well and there was a bit of beef between both of them because they were like rivals in the illegal shake game. I'm just going to be very careful. I'm just going to be very careful okay. because I know where a lot of our listenership is and I've got a lot of love for anyone with a purple bin. <laughs> but not <laughs> everyone's auntie had a connection <laughs> with stolen counterfeit property. No, of course, because then my auntie wouldn't be able to sell all these T-shirts. Right. If everyone's auntie did that. What, so she was the only one in Liverpool doing it? was two in Dovecost and they were both my aunties. Cardle and Maisie. <laughs> right. Yeah. Sounds like really homely. Like, come on, gather round. Yeah. It's a, it's a fake Siggies. It's a fa sold. family birthday. Move the boxes. Fake They're Siggies, fucking fake Levi's. DVDs. Right. But then I took over the DVD games. They were like, yeah. let's leave that. They passed it on to me, family business and all. But then they kept selling the, the like, you get trackies, you'd get T-shirts, but you get them like super cheap. Like, I did for like six quid. T-shirt. <laughs> yeah, is that what you got for every present? Like, t he's, he's asked for a Skeletrix. Can't do fucking Skeletrix, <laughs> but I can do a lovely fucking, look at that. Fake That's watches. a lovely watch, that. Like, they do, Siggy, Hublot. they do Siggy runs to France and Spain, come back with a load of them. <laughs> I, I know you want a fucking mountain bike, <laughs> but I've 200 embassy, Adam. <laughs> fucking hell. You are an embassy, lad. No, look. Hey, Maisie, get the <laughs> regal king size out. Yeah, it'd be uh, three quid for a pack of 20 or 250 if you were family. What? <laughs> three quid for a pack of 20? Yeah, or £2.50 if you were family. If you were in your family? Yeah. I thought you meant like you're doing family cigs. <laughs> <laughs> How rough was Dovecot? Right, honestly, we're going to chip in and we're doing the family fag run. <laughs> What's the baby on? Super King, lights. <laughs> Not an animal. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. You get the Do you know what's really funny? This is 100% true as well. And I hate like leaning into any scout stereotypes, but... <laughs> a few years ago that's so common in Liverpool that someone sells like jag fake gear right around Christmas jag jag wow what does that mean fake jag yeah jag it's jag 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 do you know the history linguist do you know um, jag maybe like jargon alright cool like bullshit it's, it's bullshit that but oh, I like it, it works. Jargon yeah, yeah yeah but it's so common and like around Christmas time, if you walk around Liverpool City Centre doing a bit of shopping, you'll get stopped by people on the street sometimes going, do you want to buy any stuff? I've like t-shirts and I, I'm not lying, am I? No, no. And it's this like, lad robbed as well, though. Well, that's what one lad said to me. He stopped me. He went, do you want to buy any of these t-shirts, lad? And I went, I don't think so, lad. And he went, don't worry, lad. It's not jag. Genuinely robbed. <laughs> 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 oh, that's fucking great. Don't fucking you dare look at me. This isn't fucking jar shit. <laughs> fucking nick these myself. I'm a fucking thief and I'm proud. I don't, I'm not a fucking rat. I don't. I wouldn't rip anyone off. <laughs> I'd steal from... <laughs> I'd fucking rip you off, man. Walk around the corner. There's a fucking lad crying. <laughs> I fucking nick them off him. What am I? I've got fucking morals. <laughs> So funny, uh, so true. Fucking camo, <laughs> eh? Runers. Anyway, that's that was fun. I honestly, I've done a, I've done a fart there, by the way, and I apologise because it's absolutely destructive. Oh come on! I'm sorry. Come on! How have you not done that till this point? What do you mean? You've not been very Trumpy. Is that out of respect? Well, sometimes I do it, but I like lean that. Like you'll see if you watch the videos back, I, I, like I let it go that oh, way. Also, it just disappears off into the. <laughs> well, it just like stage you, left. You, you give it a bit of a push, don't you? So it, it's yeah, going yeah, like yeah, it, yeah, yeah. it's trying to go that way. Yeah, <laughs> you know I mean it's forced, but then it just popped out, and I've just smelled. I've had a lot of cheese this week. I've just, like, <laughs> <laughs> we've just been to Nando's. We I've had a bit had of Peronese. A lot of cheese, lad. I had a bit of Peronese, and it doesn't really agree with me, and. I'm really sorry, but it's absolutely potent. Right, let's have a break, and I'm just gonna have a little. Uh, I'm gonna have a little walk outside and a word with Jesus. 
Shout out to Trans Alloy Wheels, one of our sponsors for this week's podcast. If you need anything doing to your car, bodywork, alloy wheel refurbishment, anything like that, they're based in Leeds and they can do anything for you if you're based in the Yorkshire area. These guys are a well-trusted family-run business. If you need anything on your car, sorting out the bodywork, the wheels, jazzing up, fixing, these are the guys to see. Trans Alloy Wheels Limited. They're dead good lads. Please go and see them. They've been a big supporter of the podcast from day one. We love them. They do amazing work we've had so many good reviews from our listeners we've gone and seen charlie go and get your car sorted out and tell them we sent you as adam said there's a massive list of things these guys do and the best news is as have a word listeners and watchers you get 25 percent off everything make sure you let them know we sent you you'll get a discount they know we're sending them customers everyone's a winner now back to the podcast do you know what's uh, happening now that he's back with me i've noticed because we're spending a lot of time together you've got more scouts I'm getting more scouts, but also I'm becoming more of a knobhead again. Yeah, yeah, true. Like, I'm a knobhead around him. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but you're our knobhead. We've been for something to eat today, took him to the dentist. He smashed it. He was a very brave boy. He got a sticker and everything. Um, we were singing in the car, doing some... Uh, oh, I can't believe I've never told you this on the podcast. Because, right, okay. So if you're a long-time listener or viewer of this, you'll know that I'm partial to doing an impression. Right now, obviously, I do it because it's funny. Because some of them I'm good at, some of them I'm really shit at, and it makes for funny content. Mm. <laughs> some of them you're really good at, <laughs> but one of them you're good at. <laughs> Genuinely, I'm really re- and <laughs> I knew he was gonna laugh, and I can't get through it. You can ask him. <laughs> I am brilliant <laughs> at like singing impressions. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like Right, yeah, yeah. To know, like, to do a copy of a band or a yeah. Yeah, how they sing. Like I haven't got a good voice unless I'm trying to do someone else's and then I get it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, anyway. We, face. We'll we'll get on with the pod. <laughs> <laughs> His confidence is so fun to watch and Ask work him. with. Do you know when his, his dad might not have been able to do the wallpaper in? He was like, ah, lad, we'll do it ourselves. Look around this fucking studio. How would we have done it? Him trumping like, sorry, lad, older lad. I don't have to have a cheese. He chats a lot of shit, but as much as it pains me, he is actually quite good. Right. <laughs> now, you, who have you got? Anyone. Oh, no, 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 no. Play, listen, this is your tryout. I'm giving you an open spot. Anyone. Do you do your best 10. Wow me. Who are we doing on the way here? Uh, Mark Morrison. Return of the Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it with his face. <laughs> let, me just, let me just lower that. <laughs> He's trying to read what's coming up and concentrate. It's so I'm, funny. I'm not go trying on. to read anything. Go on, go on, go on. I just want you to have totally focus for this. It's all. <laughs> Go He's gone now. I'm not coming back, you know. <laughs> you laugh. <laughs> no, he's good. Let him do it. Uh, I am trying to let him do it. He got to the second syllable. Yalla. <laughs> But, but please, when you when he get, when it listen, just a little bit direction. Really lean into. But I do do do. I love that bit. It's my favorite bit of the song. Ready, ladies and gents. Mark Morrison, <laughs> Stop the it. Of the match. I'm not gonna get it out. You lied to me. I don't know. You said you never would. It's Nelson Mandela. <laughs> you're doing a singing Nelson. I want to live. I'm actually really her. good at this, and you're ruining it. You lied to me. It's never. <laughs> Free <laughs> Mark Morrison. I want to live in a free South Africa. You lied to me. But that do do do. Give me another one. Because um, I've lost that one now. Who's got a distinctive voice? Who's got a. Who's got a. Uh, Sean Paul. Sean Paul. <laughs> Shut up, Paul. Come on, get it. I don't know where you're at. 
Cause we the time going I wanna be keeping you on Cause the right <laughs> Sean Paul has never Could sounded be one more like, fish. But mate you nearly were A shanna parla A shanna parla In a bombay In a mumbai Come on ladies Come on ladies Do the fish One pound fish One pound fish Have a, have a look One pound fish <laughs> Six forty five pound One pound fish <laughs> <laughs> I am really <laughs> glad we didn't start the pod with this because this would have been too much mayhem. We needed to talk about fucking feeler tracksuits before we uh, built up to. Who else? One, is it all people from a different ethnicity? <laughs> who was the first? Mark Morrison, is it? What's he? <laughs> Are you kidding? No. Is he black? Yeah. I've, I've only ever heard him. Did you not know, Mama? Have you you're never seen me to me. If I know you're such a never work, you lie to me. Wow. Yeah. That's good. But I do, do, do. Return of the man. Who else was I doing before? Um, <sighs> ja Rule? Ja Rule. Every, uh, just everyone. Uh, Oh, even Ja Rule. <laughs> oh, baby, I love it when I kiss you, baby. Your kiss, your smile. That was a hate crime, that one. <laughs> that's that's, not, that's not, not, not legal. What? Just, just do cut. Do I do? Anybody that live in it? He doesn't. I do. He doesn't. He does, does he sing the chorus, Ja Rule, or does he rap? Oh, he's going in the back, isn't he? Do I do? It's a fucking. That's not, that's not Jar. He's literally singing the chorus that Jar Rule doesn't sing. Yeah, but that's just to give me Jar Rule's voice. Yeah, because I imagine he mouths Baby, along. Baby, it's just another day, one away, one night thing. Will Smith. Are we just going to do all of the shit R and B hip hop stars from? That's what we've been listening to on the way over a lot, isn't it? What have you had on? Uh, R&B bangers, Destiny's Child, Jaru. It's harder for me to do female. Is it? Yeah. Oh, well, I, you wouldn't want to drop your standards, would you? <laughs> Is Mark Madison fucking black? Usher. We have a lot of Usher on. Oh, oh. Jesus Christ. Ben. It's gone burn for me to say it is. It's gone for my way. I can't to re- do it because I'm on, I was nailing this in the car, wasn't I? Tell it him. Was, it was fantastic on it's the way. It's gone burn for me to say it is. It's gone from my heart. It's been a long time coming. You know, it What about Nelly? You really want to work this out. I don't fuck? think you're going to change. I do what you've done. You're best we go One of the leading comedians in UK comedy right now. But if he's in a certain mood doing this podcast, <laughs> it's like doing care. <laughs> you all right, Adam? Do you like singing? I do like singing. You be Kelly Rowlands, I'll be Nelly. Okay. Kelly, I, I love you. I need you. Nelly, I love you. I do. Carl, you're an enabler. Carl's just there going, lovely voice. No, but because he knows I'm good at it and you're just putting me off. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? Mm. Mm. Send in your suggestions of artists you'd like Adam to Whoa, emulate. Your sex is on fire. Wow. Beautiful. Tom Jones. <laughs> Can you sex bomb, sex bomb. You're my sex bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Six bomb, six bomb. You want six bomb? Oh, fucking Vic and Bob. Vic Reeves doing those songs was so good when he. Right, send him in. Have a wordpod pod at gmail.com. Adam is like a human jukebox. <laughs> it's phenomenal. We, um. Wait, wait. <laughs> What have you got? Last night. <laughs> Shall I tell him? So me and Carl had the same driving instructor, right? His name's John. I won't tell you the certain name because it's not fair. But he was fucking mental. 
like he was how old? Oh, like your age. Um, early fifties. <laughs> no, he was. You said your age. You're fucking pissing me off. I know that just happened accidentally, but I'm not happy about that. <laughs> Don't team up on me. You're meant to be. You're meant to be like a. <laughs> you're meant to be an independent adjudicator on this. Yeah. How old is he? Your age, fifty. <laughs> oh, oh. That wasn't planned at all. That was I remember sitting my first child down on my knee and th- saying, "It's the World Cup 1990." <laughs> <laughs> so he was mental. So genuinely, he had like all these little weird quirks. So before he told you to do anything, he would say, "Okay," right? So he'd go, "Okay." Now just interface there. Just put that interface. And his breath. Where's he from? Liverpool. All right. His breath stunk. Oh, um, oh, dad breath. No, not he, it was like he'd been chewing shit all afternoon. Yeah, it's dad breath. Oh, so okay. And he had. And by the way, so Carl was learning with him first. And Carl put me onto him because he was like, should get John, lad. John's great. And then, like, three lessons in, I went to him. He's a knobhead. And he went, yeah, I don't know, but I want someone to talk about it with. <laughs> That's beautifully done. And he also did it with his other mate, Alex. The exact same thing. And all three of us learned with John, right? right. Mental. So you passed it on to Alex. You're like, well, let's have a third person in the group chat. No, I didn't, I didn't know. He'd done, he'd done it with me and Alex at like the same time. Oh, I was sowing the cunty seed yeah, far yeah, and yeah. wide. It's clever, isn't it? So, you know when you do your emergency stop? Yeah. Right? <laughs> this is 100% true as well. So, he'd go, right, just there. Blast us. That was his other favourite thing. Blast us down the road. You'd be like, you know, like a traffic light. It's a weird turn of phrase, isn't it? Yeah, he'd be like, right, you've got a queue behind you here. Oh, okay. So uh, you want to make sure you get off nice and quickly because these, you know, these are experienced drivers, they might be getting somewhere. So you don't want to be holding people up. That's what that people don't like leaders for. So you just want to like just blast us down the road. As fast as you can, like, John, I'm doing 30. It's a 30. No, blast us. Keep blasting us down the oh, road. Come on, me tease on. <laughs> it was fucking mental. He, the emergency stop was the worst one, wasn't it? So he'd go, right? So you want to just get up. He takes like this country lane. And he'd go, you want to get yourself up to like 50, 60 miles an hour in here. And then as I tap me hand on the thing, I want you to just stop the car. <laughs> hang on, hang on. He didn't make you do an emergency stop from 50, 60 miles an hour. He fucking did. Oh, he did. You men are doing, emer- I'm not even, this sounds like I'm trying to do shtick. Emergency stops are just meant to be at like, a, a leisurely 30 miles an hour. This was a country road in Nosley, wasn't it? He would he would put all the possessions in like a safe in the car, otherwise <laughs> they would projectile. I, I'm not making this, I swear to God, you can press that if you need to, but I'm. this is not bullshit. Fuck. So we go, right, you want to get to like nice 50, 60 miles an hour, I will tap my hand on the dashboard and I want you to bring the car to a sudden stop as fast as you possibly can, right? And the first time he did it, and he did this with all three of us, and we all independently told each other about it, because... <laughs> The first time you do an emergency stop, you don't do an emergency because you're scared, aren't you? You don't want to like send yourself through the fucking windscreen. So we stopped it quite quick and he go, okay, how do you think that got went? And we're like, John, I don't know, mate, because I've never done one before. Yeah, with every two. single one of us, because <laughs> obviously the the scenario with an emergency stop is, I want you to just stop the car as if a child has passed out in front of the car and stepped off the curb and is in your way. <laughs> he goes, so how do you think that went? I don't know, John, never done this before. He go, kid's dead. <laughs> I love it. Like, How do you think that went? There's a child dead, Adam. <laughs> Put it in first. We're going to blast off from here. That would be better, though, wouldn't it? Because that's like, look, if you do that, you've killed a child and you don't want to do that. I'm trying to teach you stuff. <laughs> it was the kid's dead. And it, he'd do that with his hands. Kid's dead. You're happy. Fucking dead kids everywhere. You've run over 10 kids and they're all dead. But he didn't shout. He just. Yeah. Could you imagine if you were doing 55 miles on over? <laughs> <laughs> what was the other thing? I'll get out here. Oh, if you made a mistake. So if you made a mistake while you were driving, like a bad one, like if you went from like f- like third into second instead of going into fourth or something, <laughs> he'd go, right, you know what's going to happen? On a your driving test, you do that. The, the examiner is going to go, pull over here. I'm getting out. <laughs> And he made out like it cost you like thousands of pounds to do a test. It's like 70 quid or something, isn't it? And you have to wait like a week to do it again or like two weeks. You have to do a few lessons before you can take your test again. 
She was like, if you do that on your test, he's going to say to you, just pull over here, please, mate, because I'm getting out. And it's going to cost you, you know, you, I, I just sign me a check there for four or five grand. I'm going to get off. I'll see you in six months. <laughs> Who's he getting? A, who's the who's the who's the test guy getting a fucking Uber with? It's four or five grand. How did he work that one out? It's just like it's just to scare you. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm getting out here. Forty right. You can wait for your driving instructor. I'm going to take this four and five grand. I'm going to go on holiday with it. It's just <laughs> fucking crazy. And last night, Carl found John's driving schools uh, page on a website uh, where you can leave reviews. Oh jeez! So, like, I'll say this disclaimer: they're now down. They were up for ten seconds. It was screenshot. It was just for us too, and also we gave him five stars for everything. So, if anything, they were positive. We weren't like trying to ruin his business. We were just having a laugh. But uh, <laughs> so, Carl was like, "Look, you can leave a review." So, I left a review, but in his name. Right. So, what did I say? Uh, uh, I'll read it out. So, uh, from Carl Riegler on his thing. I was recommended John by his... No, 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 not that one, the first one I did. Wait on that one. So the first one I did, which is the video, I said... (laughs) (laughs) Blast us down the road, slam on, kid's dead, I'm getting out here, that'll be 300 grand, please, see you in 25 years. Full name, Carl Riegler, Carl's postcode, and Carl's email, right? And he was like, do you think that was fucking smart? What do you think I'm going to do back? So then he did one back, which was... The second one. It was amended, wasn't it? You said something like, uh, you, he'd put it under Adam Rowe. So it said, John would always insist that I wear a helmet during <laughs> lessons. He would also blast Ja Rule for the entirety of the hour and rap along while shouting at women out the window. <laughs> <laughs> this is funny because of Ja Rule. But we would always go through the drive through at the end and he actually still owes me £7 for that fillet of fish. So, whenever you can get Ja Rule and a fillet of fish in a review, you know you're having a great We day. made sure we gave it five stars, but I was like, to him, no, like, you need to leave it as a pro, because you can't delete them on this website. It's, once you've got left the review, the review's there, but you can't edit them. Right. So, he'd done that, but he'd put my email in. So, I had to go to my email to confirm, the re- like, log in to confirm your review. So, I did, but then I edited it. Um, so, I left it at the photo which he put up, which is just a picture of Chris Akabusi smiling. That's the picture he used to accompany the review. And I just changed it to... <laughs> it's so subtle. This, I think this might be the funniest thing I've ever done. I was recommended John by his former student, Carl Riegler, who has sadly since passed away. <laughs> and then I did the Ja Rule fillet of fish yeah. helmet. And that's so you think he's turning in... He's like you're releasing you in a knobhead. Yeah. 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 Like last night, my bird tried to tell me about a book she's reading, and I was just like, "This isn't fucking stupid enough for me. I can't listen to you." So basically, you've gone from us being nanas on the podcast now with Carl, and then you're doing a sort of like have a word extra constantly with Carl in your life. I literally said that to him in the car. I went, "We're spending so much time together. I feel like I'm always doing the podcast." I, I my, one of my questions just before you said, I was like, "How's Jade?" <laughs> like, is well, she all right? Because I'm getting it all out with him. I'm I'm quite dull at home at the minute. Right, okay. I'm just a bore and I'm just like on my phone. I just like I just need to not use my brain for a bit because yeah. I'm using it all day trying to ruin his life. That's how Jade likes you. <laughs> just sit there. <laughs> sit there and don't get I angry about it stuff. Though, I try to chat shit. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. 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 I but enjoy, with, you, with with him? Yeah, I enjoy saying the stupidest thing possible in the most sincere voice to see how he reacts. I wonder where you get that from, Adam. Like, what did I say tonight, Adam? We were listening to the Hamilton soundtrack. Oh, God. Oh. He's fucking obsessed with it. No, is he? <laughs> and He I, makes me not want to watch it. Exa- even that, though exactly. it's so popular and people go, it's incredible. I feel like going, oh, it's like when someone's like, oh, it's amazing. You're like, Wee. even though I'm losing out by not watching Hamilton. Just watch it and stop being gimps. It's cause He's you- a fucking idiot, by the way. Do you know what he said? We were listening to Hamilton, one of the best musicals of all time, this objectively. all musicals, though. And he went, the thing that annoys me with musicals is, they could just say it. <laughs> can you make me a cup of tea? It's like, can I just say, I'm not just trying to be an antagonist. That is the is the critique of musicals that is that 
is the same as you going, fucking modern art's bullshit. Just do a good painting. Like, it's like, if, you're, should into, mention. if you're into art, what you said about art that day, that's the same. If you're into musicals, I was like, oh, it's not the point. It's musical theatre. So this is the public episode, so we, we should qualify that. On, a, on one of the Patreon episodes, which you, if you haven't signed up to Patreon yet, Apologies, you are missing out because it's the best shit. Patreon.com slash have a weird pod. Um, come and join the team. Uh, we were talking about like Dan's into modern art and I think it's wank. So at some point we're going to go to a modern art gallery and they're going to video me sort of reviewing it. And we might at some point in the next week or two, Carl might bring some pictures in of modern art or you might as well. And you, you, and you, you want me to review it and we'll slide them. them in to the episode. If you want to listen to that episode and get all the extras of being a patron, patreon.com slash have a word pod. From as little as three pounds a month, genuinely. So we've we've recorded a little advert for this, but while it's come up, we might as well sort of plug it as well. The Patreon that we do, you might have hit, if you listen to a lot of podcasts, or maybe you don't. Maybe this is the only one you're into. Patreon is like a, a you can become a paid member and you get like little extras. Now a lot of the other podcasts in the UK and even in America, they'll do like oh if you if you become a Patreon for five or £10 a month, then you'll get a day's early access to the episodes and you'll get like a live Q&A on Instagram with us every month that no one else gets access to, some shit like that. Our Patreon starts at three quid and from three quid a month, you get an extra episode every week that no one else ever gets. It's only on Patreon. And you also get at least 24 hours early access to all these public ones. So... Also, oh, it's like an hour, an hour and a half of podcast. We're not just knocking... Initially, we were like, we'll just maybe do 45 minutes. It's like an hour and 20 it's minutes, an, an hour and a half episode. regular, yeah. You get, like, direct access to us. It, the, the extra Patreon episode becomes... I mean, it's intended to be a and a but we go off on so many tangents. We normally get through four or five questions an episode if we're lucky. Um, you get a direct line to us to answer questions. If you're not on Patreon with us yet... You really are missing out. Go and look at our Twitter. Every tweet we get about Patreon is it's always the best one of the week. Patreon.com slash have a weird pod. You get an extra episode every week. You get 24 to 48 hours early access to the public episodes. You get discounts on merch. You get access to live gigs we're doing before anyone else does. So even if it's not a have a weird event, if me and Dan are doing a stand-up gig somewhere, we let our patrons know before we let the public know. It's like a priority thing. It's, it? it's a fucking proper inside members club and you'll love it if you sign up. Shall we uh, do the competition for the hoodie while we're here, while we're doing a little bit of uh, <laughs> all business? I think so. So <laughs> a lot of people have been commenting because there's me and Dan have got these orange hoodies. Now, if you've been on to haveawearedpod.com, um, you will have noticed that you can buy some merch. You can buy a hoodie. You can buy a t-shirt. We have a mug. We've got some other stuff coming soon. We're dead excited about it. It's going to be really cool. But we only made three of these orange hoodies. There's only the one I've got, the one Dan's got, and one spare. And for a while, we've been trying to figure out a way to give away the, uh, the modeling. Yeah. <laughs> it made me want to stop doing that. I did the tit jiggle and yeah. I thought you were going to be like, oh, that's awful. And you were like, yeah. Yeah, you're never going to creep me out. Uh, we're trying to figure out a way to give away, at like a competition or something. So now that we're trying to get into the YouTube market uh, and we want to grow the YouTube channel because it gives us so many possibilities when we get a lot of subscribers on YouTube. What we want to do is we're going to run a little competition where you can win the third and final orange hoodie. So at the minute, it's it's one of three. I've got the other one. Dan's got the other one. Carl hasn't even got one. Maybe we'll get him one in a few weeks. Uh, but the... Oh, no, maybe not. <laughs> uh, we're going to do a little competition. Do you remember what it is? Yeah. We are going to uh, ask everyone if you could go on YouTube, subscribe, ring the bell, take a screenshot of that, but then also ask a friend to do it, prove it. You need two screenshots. And if you send that in to haveawordpod at gmail.com, no, we'll tweet go in the hat. Either email it or tweet us it. Um, yeah, so that's what you need to do. You need to go to youtube.com slash haveawordpod. You need to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You need to ring the bell on the YouTube channel. All that ringing the bell does, it means when we put a video up, you'll get a little notification on your phone or to your email going, there's a new video from Have A Word. Subscribe, ring the bell. Oh, my pen's gone. <laughs> and text one of your mates going, 
Hey, you should really get into this podcast. Basically, we're looking for a way to grow the channel. We're doing this competition because we want more subscribers and more people ringing the bell. And if you all do this, then not only will you win, we're going to we'll put everyone in a hat. We'll pick one winner who wins the orange hoodie. And also on top of that, you'll be given two free tickets to any show you ever want to come to. So let's say I'm doing a tour show in Liverpool, you can come to that show. If we're doing a big Have A Weird show, you can do that. If Dan's doing a big tour show somewhere, you can go to that. You can pick two tickets to any show involving me, Dan, or both of us, whenever you want, as well as the orange hoodie. How about that? Subscribe, ring the bell, and tell a mate to do the same. Send us those screenshots on Twitter or to haveawaredpod at gmail.com. You'll go in the hat, and in two weeks' time, we'll draw the name out the hat. And there'll be a second prize of a lovely pair of Lonsdale trainers. That's if you come last. <laughs> second is last, isn't it? Yeah. I'd love to buy a pair of Lonsdale trainers. Oh, they've got to be the nonce shoes. You've got to buy a shows. pair of Lonsdales that I get to customise. Oh, yes. The live shows. I'm so looking forward to that first live show when I'm wearing my nonce shoes. Oh, if you don't know what we're on about, well, it's all on there on Podbean. Go and check your fucking app. Listen back. We got fucking eighty episodes of this bullshit. Should we um, talk to a sponsor? Let's talk to a sponsor, and then we're going to come back with our guests, who today are Paul Machen and Chris Pajak from the Red Men TV. Good mates of mine. They're dead funny. The dead sound lads, and we're going to have a good laugh. If you are into the footy, you'll already know them. It's not going to be a footy heavy episode. So if you're not into your footy, don't be like, oh, I won't listen to the guest bit. It's going to be dead good. They'll be here in half an hour, and then we're going to come back. We're going to film it, and you'll see it in about 25 seconds or a minute or something. <laughs> way too much detail. And you watch it with your eyes and your ears. <laughs> I was listening. All right, lad. With my eyes. What's happening, guys? Today's sponsor is Beer52.com. They are the UK's number one craft beer discovery club. And they've teamed up with us to give our listeners a free case of beer. That means you get eight free beers, an award-winning beer magazine, and a tasty snack as your first free order. And it's free. You pay nothing. You just pay the £5.95 postage and packaging. You'll then be a member of their Craft Beer Discovery Club and they send you a different theme of beers every month. Past themes have been the beers of Belgium, the beers of Korea, California, all over the world. Every month, a new theme and they're always a belter. You'll find craft beers that you'll never find on your own and also you can pause your membership at any time. So do us a favour, support the podcast, support our sponsors, go to beer52.com slash weird. That's B-E-E-R 52.com slash W-O-R-D. Every time you sign up, we get a little bit of money. So you get your free beers. There's a little bit of money to support the podcast. It's win-win. I'm a member. I love it. Let's get back to the podcast. We're we'll going to get some beers. Pause it here. Go and get some beers. B-52. Give us some volume, boys. Hello everyone, welcome to the Have A Word podcast. Oh, there we go. Hello everyone, welcome to the Red Men TV. I'm Chris <laughs> Pajak. this is the Star 11 prediction show. It's Liverpool versus Arsenal in the Community Shield this Saturday. I'm not editing that out. Jesus Christ, that was good, wasn't it? That's, how long have you been doing it? Because we are not, we like, <laughs> we just we have not nine years. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Fucking, I hate trying you, to think of things to say, mate. You sounded like a, a, a Liverpoolian, like, garage MC that got such a rhythm to it, like... <laughs> I was like, fucking hell, he's spitting bars. <laughs> <laughs> so Thanks for coming in. We've got uh, Paul and Chris here from the Red Men TV. Now, if you've been following me for a while, you've probably, like a lot of my followers have come from, especially me 40 followers, have come from doing your channel. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been doing the Red Men? Ten years. So ten the years Red Men TV is a Liverpool football club fan channel. Yeah. yeah. Ten years. Yeah, ten years on YouTube. It's like... 13, I think, since <laughs> I was like, Chris, I've got this hand painted banner that we've done. And do you want to come and stand in the street? Yeah, we're going to be doing so this show. Do you want to take soon. a photograph with it? Not really, Paul, but yeah, like yeah. we're here and we've got it and you've made your wife make the banner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's been it's been an idea for about 13 or 14 years, but it's been on YouTube. We've been actively making content for a decade, which is. Imagine if we get a decade code. in. That's what we said the other day. We want to do 10 years. It won't be like failure with numbers. One, it, someone will have been like assaulted or murdered. That's how it'll be, won't it? It'll be like a fucking... What are you planning? It'll be one nonce too many. <laughs> it'll be death by passive aggression. Oh. <laughs> no, but he doesn't function like that. He goes, no, you're fucking wrong, you lid. And you're like, ah. We, we've, had, we've had that conversation a lot. Because, like, 
We've both tried to start podcasts with other comedians in the past, and we won't mention any names, but it gets a little bit... Because comedy is such a singular, solo thing, like, when you're involved with someone else, it gets a little bit... Well, I, I'm not sure we should do it that, I think... I was just thinking, like, not, let's not say no, but, like, let's just have a look at other... It gets a little bit passive like that. I can't... I don't function like that. Mm-hmm. So if he does something or goes, we're going to do this, and I think it's shit, I'd go, I don't think that's going to work, you know? I think that's shite. What about this instead? And it... I get annoyed because I think the subtext... So I'm like, you know what? He said that... And I'm just fucking, I just really feel like, and then you read it again, you're like, oh, he's just told me what he wants. Like, it's almost, <laughs> I'm just used to A, my wife, and then also bitchy mates in comedy. And Adam's just like, no, I said that, I don't like that, and I like that. Like, it's, it's really simple. Yeah, it's, there's something admirable and horrible about people like you. Yeah. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Is this rude? Is this efficient and rude? I, I, I know to be more delicate with people, like, in general, certainly in real life. <laughs> Uh, but like with people who know me well, like him, him and me misses, I'm like, no, we're not doing that. I hate it. So why would we? What? Hey, that's like love on the spectrum or one of those dating <laughs> shows where someone's like on the spectrum. Like I know now to read emotions from people's faces. <laughs> I do think that You're there's a bit of autism going on, on somewhere. <laughs> You're what? struggling with the masks. What do you mean? Just hiding everyone's emotions. I can't wear them. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wear them. So uh, have I offended way. someone? Uh, did they need to file? There's no way of you knowing anymore, is there? Oh, is that what you were saying? Like I'm struggling with people's. No, I don't care. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, no one has trouble with that. He's got very expressive eyebrows. <laughs> You've got to though, haven't you? I, I, I'm, a, I'm a natural. I like, I like smiling. I like, you know, I like, I like to have interaction with people. You hate it. You hate no, it to the smiling. general public. But I love it. Like, uh, and, uh, and I, it annoys me that I'm like, it hurts to try and convey that you're pleased with what someone's done for you now. Got to make sure it's all in the eyes these days. But the, the scowl, the scowl of like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Is the same eyes as, <laughs> that's really funny. So when you, you no, know, they the were shock, vastly different. You know, yeah, I don't yeah, think like, you've ever seen your were. face do both but those things. I think that's a cool face. <laughs> just, <laughs> just what it looked like I'm being racist in chat like. <laughs> do you yeah, have so. like a cum face? You mentioned that was your face. <laughs> Do you know like what your face does? I wasn't ready for that left turn. <laughs> <laughs> I know like we were doing that and then all of a sudden, do I have a cum face? He said that was a cum face and then it, I, I don't think I've ever asked you that question. Do you like, <sighs> are you conscious of what you're doing? When- I'm just so grateful. That's still fucking, <laughs> I'm like, thanks, <laughs> Carl. Just follow with a thumbs up. Ah, <laughs> uh, the 2019 bonk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know. I've never, you, who's taking a selfie at that point? Let's make some porn. Why is the camera on you, Dan? Come on. Mm. Everyone's had sex in front of a mirror. Yeah. yeah. Have your eyes open at the moment of... of, of I know my toes, Kale. I'll fucking tell you that for free. <laughs> it's a good mirror. Like beetle, like beetle <laughs> juice. <laughs> <laughs> like a crab. <laughs> <Just on laughs> <a> fucking <laughs> wicked witch of the West. Have you got a mirror next to your bed? I know I've only just met you. Yes. For thinking. Not for shagging. It's for... I think it's for her to get a face ready. But you clock yourself. Well, there have been times. You can't help oh, it. Yeah. Have you not got a mirror in the bedroom? Yeah, we've got one on the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> so, I can see, so my wife can see my fat, hairy back. <laughs> you said that like I'm the ticket, though. We've got. Have you got a minute in the bedroom? Yeah. Everyone's got a mirror in the bedroom. What are you saying? No, I mean, you're not, not a fucking vampire. Like, you're not, no, no point. No yeah. point. Can't see myself anyway. All right, hang on. When you say mirror for shagging, in my head, it's one of them fucking eyes wide shut things well, that's the side head, of the room. Someone said mirror for shagging. No one said mirror for shagging. No one said <laughs> the mirror's there for shagging. That was literally in your head. If you can position it such that you can, you know, dry your hair and put your face on and also see yourself during intercourse, then... You know, just one of those good. face ones that tilt like a little, just trying to get an angle. We well, are making got- it sound like, like Jay, I'm a little worried, like... Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to see yeah, anyone okay. shagging. See, we've got a minute, right? Well. And I tell you what, right, here's what it does for your ego. It really does just chop you down a bit. <laughs> because, like, when you are shagging and you catch a little glimpse, because when you know it's there, like, when you're getting into it, you don't, you're not, not thinking there's a mirror there, but then, like, out your peripheral or something, you'll catch, oh, there's a mirror. You can't know there's a mirror there and not have a look. You just can't, yeah. right? So, like... If you've ever filmed yourself having sex, which I've done on very, very, very few occasions, it's from one angle, innit? What? <laughs> Have you never? What? How weird? How is she never talked about this? 
Have you never talked about that? Have you never made a home? I thought that was what the Patreon was. <laughs> us banging on that but couch. Like, We've wiped it down. In your head, <laughs> you are a porn star, aren't you? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like when you're going at it. You know, like last week when you were talking about your threesome and you said like you were giving it death from behind. Like in your head, you were like an absolute god and you were, if you looked in that mirror I'm telling you right now you'd feel a lot different about what happened that afternoon can I give you a good example 100%. of it it's like playing footy and I've, 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 I've we, we, had, we had a couple of games on YouTube so we played some of the, the, the big YouTube football sides and I was in goal and I made a couple of good saves in there I remember people saying that was amazing what is it and in the pub it's amazing people go oh you, you remember it differently and I was like don't get too hyped up about it because when you watch it back it's not going to look that impressive because you when you're in it and you you do a good moment in footy you feel like you're the, you the you are a professional footballer yeah. and I remember like my mate remember a mate of mine it's played a School level was was okay, but I remember reaching a point with playing, and a mate of mine went, y "You're never going to be a footballer, mate. <laughs> you're not going to be a footballer." I said, "What? What really? But I can do." It's like, you, yeah, you I never want to watch it back. You're like, "Oh yeah, that's not football." I never want to see a video. You're fucking messy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I never want to see a video of me attempting a step over. Like occasionally, I'll do a step over and it works, doesn't it? You get past someone, but you don't want to watch it because it will just like in real time, it'll look slow motion, won't it? So you see Neymar do so many step overs. When you do it, you're like, yeah. "I'm pretty sure." That was exactly the same. Yeah, and soon the exact as someone says the dragon, because I've seen what's the guy with the big dick called? Yeah. Carl, I've seen Carl <laughs> in all the porn. Like you know, you see him and you're like, it, it looks like what you think you do in your head, <laughs> like you've got the rhythm and that. When in reality, you just look like a sausage with a with a yeah. Yeah, when I do a step over, I look like somebody who's, who's a, a, a 16 stone woman who's come out of town and her fucking tits are hanging about and she's fucking giving it all that. That's me doing a step over in footy. Yeah. 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 What do you look head. like when you're having sex? The same, really. <laughs> <laughs> Just with, without the bra. It's a weird role play for your wife to ask for. Like, now, this is what I'm into. I want you to be a 16 stone woman with a Wilco's bag. I want you to look like a failed trialist. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to look like you're basically a 40-year-old ale house centre half who turned up at the pub the night before and said, I can play a bit and then get dropped in having had two hours kip. Is that possible for you to do that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Through a national game. Um, no, no, you've heard the mirrors in the bedroom thing. You've, you've never thrown in a Patrick Bateman flexing whilst looking at yourself in the mirror. Then you've just got opportunity. Like, you know. I mean, <laughs> even me, who is... Egotistical cunt number one. I think you're insane. Number two, mate. Right. Also, what you referenced before was in 1999. I was 18. I'd, I, oh, at yeah, that I'd age, seen. I'd have done. I'd have. I'd have oh, bonked yeah. in the mirror section of IKEA. Yeah, so I thought I was beautiful. Phil Collins now, banging out like you know what I mean. Go I'd for smash it. every fucking mirror not to see my jiggly fat fucking form. Oh God, I'd be just never mind that. If you're drunk though, I've I've clocked it when you're drunk in the mirror and then you do look like an absolute superstar. I can't recommend it enough. Like right. if you're gonna have a drink, get more mirrors in. Have you ever had a wank in front of the mirror? Um inadvertently, like in a holiday inn, because like one of their whole walls is like <laughs> mirror, isn't it? And you like the first thing I do in a hotel is crack one out. Like it's the first thing you do. You have to mark your territory. I'm like a dog. <laughs> so I just get in the bed completely naked. I have me porn on full fucking volume. Yeah. She can't do that at home. Even when she goes out for a walk or whatever, you've still got neighbours. You've still got neighbours. You might have left a window open in a hotel. Who the fuck gives who gives a shit who's in room twenty seven when you're in twenty eight? I can't do it. I can't do it. I will shout I shout and everything I scream. When you wank ah, yeah. It's my time yeah. I fucking left his and I'm talking. I'm not even lying about it. I've said it to him before. This is like four minutes after I've been given me key card. I've gone up in the lift. I'm in the fucking room and I'm off to the race. minutes later, I need to change your email. I've been that late for disgusting. gigs because I'm squeezing in me hotel christening. Get a ritual. Yeah. Do you, and you then you do, there's a big mirror and you have a look and you know what? Does it help? I can't wait for have a word on tour. This is just give me a room fucking miles away from him. But yeah, I do not want to be in room 27. Would you like a joining room, sirs? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to give that one a miss. And they have thanks. to come out of the room and there's like a really upset looking Scandinavian family that have come to see a Premier League game. Yeah. And, and little Carl, Hans is like, why? Me and Carl went on a holiday to Berlin and we had like a wank rotor. <laughs> You're sharing a room? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is for you, mate. He'd made a wank rotor up in his head. <laughs> we did. He'd Whenever go, he go goes to the toilet, I'm having he'd, a wank. He'd go, go ahead, go for a walk, 
and I'd go for a little ten minute walk, come back, tag him out, and then he'd go for a walk and I'd do my thing. You don't want to tag me. <laughs> hey, your turn. Mm. What? Lad, come on. I know you've got like a high five on the way. <laughs> I know you've got like a public image to keep up, but we're all mates here. Tell the truth. Did you think this would be the first 10 minutes? <laughs> yeah, actually, I yeah. Heard, I'd heard the podcast before. I'm surprised it took that long. <laughs> Bit fucking pedestrian there, lads. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Mirror fucking ceiling mirrors, though. That's a full, that's, that's another level of that. pedo in it. That's like, like ugh. You I can't th- ever look, like, no one looks good lay down with, like, all your fat spilling out of the sides. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, gravity's not doing you any favour. The only one who looks good on the mirror is the one who's on top, and you can't see that unless you've got an owlhead. Who's putting it up as well? Getting your dad round to get fucking put the... <laughs> I reckon that you can probably pay for an installation with that I'm shit. Not, I'm not trusting. <laughs> I don't think you need I don't, to I, get your I dad. I put up one of those Ikea mirrors that's in three bits and it's got like the adjoining bits and that was a fucking nightmare. But I also know that if it falls down, it's not going to cut me in half. Right. Um, you know, if you put that on the ceiling, like there's no way, I'd have to get someone, you know, to be fair, it's even worse, I'd have to get my mother-in-law because she does all my DIY in the house. What? You know, honestly, she, yeah, does, yeah. she does, she's unreal. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, uh, my mother-in-law, oh. my mother-in-law, she's very helpful, she's handy. <laughs> Hi, man. She's a plumber. But you'd have to, but you wouldn't, I wouldn't trust myself to put a ceiling mirror up, Jesus Christ, because you would, you'd wake up and you, your wife's decapitated because you've not put the wall Plugs in probably. That, sounds, in that sounds like a schoolyard skipper for like adults. Your mother in law's a plumber. Your mum does. Your, your mother in law's your DIY. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is, she, is she really the get the but how does that how does that sit with you? You're a modern man. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, in many ways, therefore, I'm not because I'm making women do all my work for me. Like, <laughs> right, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah but uh, it's work traditionally kept back from them. If anything, you're liberating. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You're just, you're the, I think the, normally the, he's just playing on his PlayStation while all this is going on. To be honest, giving him too much credit. You've got other people, the best people for the best for the job. You know what I mean? I've I've got my skills like. Somewhere. Talking about fussy. <laughs> Talking about fussy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, the fussy's good at it. She, she likes doing. I it. can't do flat pack. My wife Laura does the flat pack. Yeah, how can just, you how can you fuck flat pack up though? Because temp just temper. You know, like oh, yeah, the IKEA yeah. furniture, it all works, but if you fuck it up and punch it, it's done. So she's got the patience. She's like, yeah. leave me be. I'll do it. I'm yeah. taking a piss, but Jade, my missus, does everything in our house. I give her the money and then I go away. Because I know if I try and help, I'm a control freak. So I'm either I'm either the foreman or I'm not helping. Right. Do you know what I mean? Either you're listening to me or I'm just not getting involved. And then every now and then she'll be like, can you come and give me a hand with this? And I go up and the one little thing she needs help with, help me lift this, move that over there. What I do that and then I go away again. And that's my little system. Because yeah. I'm either doing everything or fuck all. Yeah. Having done a podcast with you for a while, I imagine you're not a load of fun doing flat pack. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. We're not building it together. Either you're building it or I'm never, building it. Never build flat pack with a partner. No. Never. Ever stupid. I mean, like my wife is brilliant. I, like my my again, similar to we bringing the mother-in-law into DIY. Other members of our family bring her in to perform their flat pack stuff. For oh, really? Yeah, because she's boss at it. But we've said we come to a point we realize this. It took us too long to realize this. It's just like say it's like a you're buying a shelving unit and a fight. That's what you're paying your money for. <laughs> like you know, what I mean? like, you know, that's what we pay for. You know, here we go. Wow, it's just great, really cheap. Well, that's what you pay. The extra money is coming. Is yeah, you you're saving that by having a big. And then you've got an immense association like that's a nice sideboard yeah it is and you're a bitch like it's yeah, all yeah, of the it's memories it's a permanent reminder like most arguments disappear don't they because you don't have like an object that's like dedicated to that fight yeah we can't cook together either in fact <laughs> I can't I'm cook with you trying to think of things we can do there's a, there's a win here though you get a flat pack bed you just have angry sex all the time yeah yeah, is that that's how, what happens to you, isn't it? I don't, I mean, and I'm thinking about throwing our bed out and getting a new one, to be honest. Now, it was a flat pack, but now we should get one. We buy loads of furniture, shagging all the time. Four grand a month at Do IKEA. you and Laura eat similar things? You said you can't cook together. Do you eat, like, do you eat as a family? Do you have, like, we're having our tea and this is what we're having? Or She goes, we're, it'll be ready in 20 minutes and that's my window to sort me out. And if we can make that work, then we eat together. But very rarely does she cook something that I'm into. Say, like... With Jade, because Jade like tries to be vegan slash veggie slash whatever she's deciding she can be asked with this week, and I will occasionally go. I'm going to be nice. I will make a vegan curry. Let's have a vegan curry instead. But then most, <laughs> even before she was veggie, we always struggled with this because like she'll she'll go. We should eat together tonight. And I'm like, sound up. Well, do you want to make it? No, you make it. And then she'll like try and. It's the same thing. I'm cooking, and she's like trying to dictate to me. 
Yeah. What? No, you no, need you a get bit out the kitchen. Like, bit, fuck bit off. less garlic in that bit. No, I don't like that much garlic. Well, then you fucking make the fucking dinner. Either I'm making it for you or you're making it for me <laughs> or we're making it together. And I could deal with that with cooking. I could be like, let's make it together and we'll both have an input. But you're not fucking backseat driving my carbonara. No, that's a classic comedian response. This is my fucking set. <laughs> yeah. I'm putting it together. Apart from when shut down, re- like a week into the lockdown. <laughs> He we keeps c- getting, we keep getting comments on like the videos and like that because he keeps calling it the shutdown. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. we called our podcast the shutdown yeah, daily, no, right? Yeah, for six months. You <laughs> fucking gang and not yeah, but bad. because <laughs> we <laughs> <laughs> the, lock, the, the lockdown daily. Yeah. But during that, that's the, like you, the, you were the, the you were with the Betamax option there. You're right, like, this yeah. is going to take off. This <laughs> we, we're going with shutdown. <laughs> everyone else went lockdown. You were, oh, well, we've got what are we going to do? We're dying on this hill. We called it early. We just yeah. got the wrong branding. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that that meal was all right. Sitting down, like it became more important because what the fuck else are you doing? You're going for a walk, maybe an eggy shop at Asda, and then the family meal. I quite enjoyed that. But when normal life is is ticking over, yeah, no, I, we've been like that the whole time. I gave up on the cooking in our house because it just wasn't worth it. Like. My, my wife likes what she likes in food. She's gotten loads better. Right? We both ended up, we did Slim and Whale for a while. And like, because of that, she got into the cooking and all that. So we had loads more agreements on it and it, and it worked. But she used to be very particular. So it'd be like, I, I, you know, when you get that, you, 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 you cook, don't you, Chris, properly. When you, you want the, you do it for yourself, but you also, there's a little part of you that wants the satisfaction of someone sitting down and going, oh, that's lovely. Oh, thanks very yeah. much. If I did something that wasn't quite right, I'd put it down and she'd be like, I don't like that. Like, She's like you. And I'd, be, and I'd be like, well, fuck you. Like, you know, like, let, let me just say, if I came to your house or if, if my missus made me dinner and it, I didn't like it, I wouldn't be, I'm not that much of a cunt. I wouldn't be like, <laughs> put it in the bin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not like that. Yeah. Like I will absolutely be like, no, baby, this is love. I will, I will play that. that can, I, totally. I just mean, if it's something I'm involved in, yeah. I'm like, I don't like doing it that way. So I'll be upfront. I'm not like, you don't like being no, mi- this micromanaged. Fuck the you peasant. No, 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 no. This is not good enough <laughs> for master row at all. Yeah. No. But to back up, back up your girlfriend. If I see you doing something wrong in the kitchen, I'm fucking telling you. Like, no, well then, that's fuck fucking off. wrong. You know what I mean? You're just yeah. doing that wrong. There's a right way and a fucking wrong way. There isn't. There is. There isn't. When you're classically French trained, there is a fucking right way and a wrong way. Are you classically French trained? Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> I worked in Cafe Rouge for three months. I'm not saying I'm classically French trained. I'm saying I know how to put a baking tray in the oven. But and I know like I should have another glove on, Chris. Uh, my, but I'm happy ex-girlf- to burn my hand if it means winning this argument. My ex-girlfriend used to put the garlic in last. And I'm like, well, that's just fucking stupid, love. You're putting the right amount of garlic in at the complete wrong time, and it's not going to taste right. So I'm not going to let you get away with that. This is, to be fair, didn't you start like a, a cooking channel during shutdown? Shutdown, yeah, yeah. Did you start cooking though online? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so are you a good cook? Yeah, I reasonably like. Reasonably, you weird channel. So I used to work weird as, channel. Used to work as a so chef. why is your missus cooking at all if you're the good cook, or is she a good cook as well? Well, apparently not. She's, she's, she's doing it wrong. She's she's all right. She's yeah. good. No, she's good at what she does well. Yeah. Does she's got like sense? a signature Great dish. Shape. She's got a few dishes there that are What's your like top. speciality? If you were on Come I Dine With Me, that. what's your main course? Oh, that's a great question. We've never done that. What's your Come Dine With Me menu? Start a main and dessert. Probably some like broad bean, pancetta, quail eggs, the salad starter. Oh my God. <laughs> With like fucking braised lettuce or something. <laughs> Didn't think we were going there. Did you, lad? Did you? I swear <laughs> to God, he could be a, fu- a he could be a garage MC. Just say that starter again. <laughs> Give that a bit of a fucking beat. The fucking quail in the box was amazing. It's a beat. Is this back to the porno? Fucking UK garage. That's the German garage. Unto 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 unto. Yeah, I love the garage. Say it again. Bro bean. Salad with pancetta, quail eggs, and braised lettuce. That's the starter. Yeah. Right, and then the main. Somebody's all fancy. Mm. Oh, mm. You can't go wrong with a fucking steak, can you? Like a proper, well done fucking T bone or something like that nearby. Something with a bit of fat, none of this fillet shit. What's your sides? Mm. Onion ring and Dof- chips. Dauphin peppercorn noir. sauce. Dolphin wine. Green oh. beans. Somewhat noir. Dolphinese. Dolph- like the dolphin potatoes. Creamy potatoes, lad. <laughs> You're literally making up words. Dolphinese? No, it's dolphin noir, but it's, it potatoes. looks like it's dolphin-flavoured potatoes. Creamy potatoes. Yeah. 
exactly never had them before. No. We had them at Paul Blair's wedding. And you know, like at, the, at a wedding, they like write on a little card what you're having. And I said, because I had a few drinks, I was like, it's dolphin potato, like dolphinese potatoes. And Jade was like, oh, poor thing, it's dolphin war potatoes. <laughs> it's wet potatoes, the shite. Oh, Chips. When you sit down at a wedding and you read the set menu and you're like, Oh, I'd fucking love a nand. I actually really like them, but chips are better. Right. I just don't get why people fuck with potatoes. They're so perfect already. <laughs> <laughs> I've told you this before, like topped fries. When people get like topped fries in like a fucking hipster burger restaurant, I'm just like, what are you fucking doing? Get all that shit on, on your main thing. and Just have your chips, salt and pepper and vinegar, just normal. Not a fan of bacon A's or nothing like that. I, I I don't mind it, but I want to dip it in, or I'll have a little bit on the on the end. I just I want my chips to be dry. I I get dead irritated because fucking every restaurant undercooks chips. Like the, they just make them crispy. Like I don't want soggy fucking chips. You know what I mean? Just put them in the fryer long enough that they're fucking cooked. Twice and cooked. Then, and then no. then I we didn't I, even I'm do like that Adam, before. Put the fucking mayo and ketchup on sand. Throw that fucking stuff on top. I've just got a soggy fucking load of potatoes. Do you know weird. what though? We we nearly <laughs> Look at these two guys, we, ne- we nearly mentioned this before, but then we did like a, a restart thing, didn't we? So what I've got beef with, which they are crispy. You know when you go to like a pub now, have you seen like twice or three times cooked chips? Have you seen there like a thing? Who the fuck's getting away with that? That's that's a piss taken. We it. used to do that when we'd fucking add chips that had just been sat there for ages, and you need exactly. To, and you just throw them back in the fryer. My mum would avoid the chippy for the first hour and a half of tea time because she's like, if you go the first hour, you get the chips from lunchtime recooked because it was seen as shite, and now it's like a delicacy. Stop slapping the I'm table. Pissed you off. Get, Adam's like playing the truck. <laughs> All I can hear in the thing is like, <laughs> fucking chips. All right, Adam. <laughs> you got a bag of crisps, please? A medical bag of crisps. <laughs> Hey, what's le- your dessert? Uh, I need clothes. Bread and butter yeah. pudding. Oh, fucking hell. That got more work in class as it went on, by the <laughs> way. That's a, that's your a- starter was proper Tory. By the end, you were like... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll start with uh, the essence of quail legs and dolphin jizz. Uh, <laughs> what would yours be? But it's got to be something you can cook. Oh, no. No, no I wouldn't. You should get a takeaway. In. Yeah, fucking just eat me. You know what I mean? That's the like game changer. That like here's a game changer. Just discovered this. Have you got an active fry? The air fry things. That... That's just a fucking oven, mate. Right. Okay. The active fry. <laughs> it's just a fucking. Yeah. You just bought a fucking small oven. Oh yeah, but it Why does. It does it chips. It does so chips fucking oven does, mate. well. But you know how oven chips are like. Aye, right, they're not great. The active fry makes them better. So we got an Indian takeaway. You know when the chips are like, it feels like they've been in the bag for a fortnight. They're like, I'm so, I'm so tired. Put them in the act fry for five minutes and you've got hot fucking crisp chips with your Indian takeaway. Everyone's staring at me like I'm a knobhead. I honestly, this is how I thought this was going to go. I thought I was going to get a stand innovation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm absolutely good. It all dolphin jizz. He's like, what the fuck? I thought everyone's going to go, Dan, you've changed the game. And you're like, who gives a shit? No, because you've got a takeaway, just... which means you weren't prepared to cook and then done after cooking yourself. It's a joke. I am massively food indifferent about all this. Like, it's like, if I want something really nice. You go somewhere really to have something really nice. Other than that, I, I, like, I like nice food. I'd rather eat nice food. I've had the choice, but I don't care enough to cook it. I haven't got the time to cook it. It doesn't give me nothing to yes, cook. Mate. I have no satisfaction yes, of preach. it. <laughs> but uh, so for me, it's like I need to eat. Just give me something that will will do do that. And yeah, no, yeah, bit, and, yeah. Carl, who isn't mic'd up at the minute because for the first time we've got two guests in the studio. I just want to double check something. You lived in Japan for a year, as our listeners know. He's just come back like two weeks ago. Yeah. You didn't, cook once, did you? Though, so you didn't cook once, did you? That's good. You didn't cook once in the whole once. year. Not once. Living on his own. He said not once. Can't really. Hear. All right, okay. He's basically saying no. He was doing a fucking long-winded version of no. <laughs> <laughs> right. I love. I I like cooking. I get like really stressed with it, but by the end of it, I feel really like satisfied. Like yeah. making a roast dinner. I'm I'm having the worst day of my life. <laughs> Slapping the desk. I'm having the worst day of my life. But by the end of it, the end, like when you get the finished product of a roast dinner with a lamb as well, ah, oh, it's amazing. It's worth the anxiety. Attack. And you put yours on. You actually did a, a YouTube channel with your cooking. Yeah, yeah. It was a bit of a pain in the ass to be honest with you, because it takes fucking ages. Just if you're cooking something, and then you've got two kids coming in and poking you in the fucking side of the head while you're trying to cook something and then you've got to edit it, put it up. You and did stuff. do the, 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 the lockdown shutdown thing where people go, 
this is the perfect opportunity for me to launch my new career. I'm going to be, ah, my YouTube channel that I've been waiting so long to release my pod, the podcast that the world needed to see. And then you, after a while, you're like, oh my God, it's a lot of work. This is not like you're fucking editing. Editing shit. Editing, well, yeah, but uh, people who, you have people to do that normally. We've well, been good. laughing a lot about those people because every comedian in the country has done exactly that. So we started this in January, a few months before lockdown got a little bit of an audience going as lockdown's gone on we've grown it and then we've opened this and it's all going well and at the start of lockdown every comedian went well i'm going to be a youtube podcaster content creator person so i'm going to spend a grand and a half on equipment right now and now the gigs are coming back you can just see like ebay listings of <laughs> podcast mics and cameras no, it's like it's like um when when gyms reopen it'll be back to that again where people go out there and they buy the boss trainees and the boss training gear and they all this and they go and pay for the full year full year at the gym <laughs> dickhead go fucking go for a run in your fucking school shoes first and see if you can do it and if you can do that for a week go and get yourself some nice traps but that's the thing with people forget that with youtube and podcast it's like no I, I need to make it high quality nah go and do it for a month and if you if you still can be asked to do it after a month then treat yourself with some good mics or treat yourself some with some bits and pieces yeah, but, don't get a bank loan oh before you've God, done a pilot like, no no is that <laughs> Is that what you did? <laughs> no, no, it's genuinely not. We built, we actually, for the first time in my life, it's actually quite a sensible way of doing it. Yeah. Did it gradually, and then we've invested money back from the pod. But I know people that just got that business to, you know, when everyone was getting help, there was also the small businesses, got a five, 10 grand loan and went, yeah, I'm going to get all the equipment. And you're like, that's, you're starting backwards. It's too much pressure. That's kind of, to be fair, that's kind of what we did with Redman, isn't it? I mean, you had the, the experience and stuff and some of the equipment, and then we were like, right, we've got 5,000 subscribers on YouTube, let's launch a page a paid service. So I took a, a five grand loan out, we built a website, and 200 people signed up at two, two pounds a month, and we went, <laughs> fuck, <laughs> what are we fucking doing here? Like, this is fucking, so we're getting about 350 quid a month great we've just sunk five grand into it and our fucking time and stuff and we're like shit and six no years later you broke even so yeah there you go what, what, <laughs> what year was this 2011 so before netflix had hit the uk so no one knew what subscription services were no one was used to them so we were like oh we're ahead of the game blah blah i i, I nicked all terms and conditions off fucking love film and I think these still might be love films, terms and conditions. <laughs> 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 Just <laughs> copy and paste it. Yeah, right? find yeah. love love film, replace with Red Men TV. People are still done. posting us DVDs back. <laughs> and we don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> um, <yeah>. That's <laughs> a good one. Uh, considering you're not a comic, that was a beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> you just waited for the fucking gap yeah. and went, pa pa. That's that was a, a point. Lovely, that was Zidane in the Champions League final. I could see it coming all out. <laughs> yeah. What's the arc of that one? Um, yeah, the, no, it was. It was mad. Yeah, it was. We, we, were, we were lucky at the time with all that because yeah, no one did it, but also. No one was doing it, so it wasn't oversaturated, but no one was doing it, so everyone was like, what the fuck are you doing? I remember being at a wedding, like, the week, it was like, we poured all the money in, Chris had been slaving on it, we'd had this, like, web design company working on it, and the week before we were launching, I went to a wedding with all my mates who I'd, I'd, I, when I went to uni, all the group of friends I had in Sheffield at the time, I'd not seen them, and they were like, how's it going, what are you up to? I've got this, I've got this website, we've been doing this YouTube channel for a year, it's going really well, we're launching the paywall, and it was people going, <laughs> what? Seriously, yeah. you're doing that, and then literally people going, "Hey, hey, if, if you heard what Scouts is, come over here, come and listen to what he's doing. He's launching. A, he's going to charge people yeah. to listen to him talk about football. This mates, and they were going, he's doing what? And I had like a gang, a crowd of people come around to be like, "What are you doing, you fucking idiot?" And uh, and it's a ha, it's a British ha, thing, ha, isn't it? You yeah. dick, it's, really well. <laughs> it's a British <laughs> thing where you feel bad, don't you? You feel like, oh. God, can I can I have like? Yeah, but people didn't understand. People still don't. It's a, it's it's less stigmatized. No, it's not stigmatized so much as it's probably more stigmatized now. To be fair, because of influencers are all less derided and it's less like dismissed as a yeah, stupid yeah, yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, 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 you don't have to explain it in really simplistic terms. People know. Yeah, like your father-in-law knows what YouTube is now. That like, you know what I mean. Like your, your nan's more likely to have watched the video on YouTube than ten years ago. When yeah, yeah. when was the turning point when you were like? Even the club, even Liverpool, think we're proper. When did you like clock it where you were like, oh, we're getting credentials and we're getting a bit of acknowledgement from like, when was the, because you're like, your subscribers, your followers, it's a fucking massive thing. Like, when was the point where you were like, oh, we are, we're proper? I don't know. I, I don't know whether I've ever had it, to be honest with you. Yeah. I think I still just having a laugh. 
Right. It was, you know it was when, yeah, yeah but you have both interviewed Jurgen and Klopp like recently, yeah. so that seems like. <laughs> Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That seems more than having a laugh. He hasn't been in here yet, funnily enough. So, <laughs> <laughs> No, there is, there's, there's no, there's, I think people go into it, and it goes back to the conversation that we kind of turned on, was I think people expect something to go, and it'll blow up, because they see it, they see it all the time. You'll, you'll see it with the comedy game. I mean, and we, and it, we'll, we'll see it more from outside. You only become aware of stand-up comics when they've got the first DVD out, yeah. or they're yeah, on yeah. BBC. Where did on, this guy yeah, come yeah, from? He's come from out of nowhere. John Bishop, he's come from overnight. Whereas you know, fifteen no one, years on the same. Exactly. <laughs> that old saying, it takes ten years to become an overnight sensation, or, or whatever, yeah. doesn't it? And it, it's been a bit like that. There's never been a moment where we've like, oh, we've cracked this. Because every time you think you've cracked it, you then turn over the video and there's someone calling you a fucking nonce for no reason. I wanted I mean? to ask you about this, right? So. Uh, just, I want to jump on you bringing it up because it's been on my head since you've got here. So we purposefully, at the start of this podcast, made a very conscious decision to leave football out of it as much as possible. So like when Liverpool won the league, we essentially did like a, a win in the league special where it was like, listen guys, Adam's going to talk about the footy today because he's still hungover slash pissed from last night. It was only 20 minutes and then we got on with other stuff. Yeah, because... I'm very aware, like, I am a wind-up on Twitter. I like doing it. It's funny to me. But because there's no way of expressing tone on Twitter and there's no way of doing it with comments or written stuff, it, you, people get really upset about fussy. Like, really, really. And I find it funny, but it's also really nasty, in it? Mm. it there's, there's really nasty, abusive, horrible comments. And... Even though you don't go out your way to wind people up, you are a Liverpool fan channel, you'll make the odd comment because it's funny and it, it's part of your life. How do you deal with the shit? Because I hate it and I can't stop myself getting it because it's, it's wired into me to be a wind up. But how do you deal with like people just going, oh, you fucking scouts, horrible cunts, you fucking dirty, that's how fucking shoot you, whatever. Well, like, do you know what I mean? That's that stuff I don't mind, that what you're saying there. Like, if someone's going, you scouts this, you scouts that, when you just like. Yeah. You're, 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 I mean, yeah. it, it, when you get generic abuse, people who think when you, you're like, you're clearly thirteen, and you you're not you're not you're not experienced enough to have learned how to properly insult someone. Yeah. So it's like there's just generic things that get thrown your way, and you, you see them, and you did just you'd you actually stop seeing them after. A while. I agree with you on that. The generic stuff, I it just makes me but, laugh. It's a personal the stuff that cuts you down for no reason. And and, I, and I'll be fair, like Chris gets it more than gets it more than I do. Um, <laughs> Why? No, but just well, we'll show we'll, you know, but there's probably a reason for it. I don't know, I, but. Uh, yeah, just it's just fucking. It is weird. It's horrible, and people don't get that. And it's, it's to do with the culture of it. And I, I try to be forgiven of it as much as I can because okay, the culture didn't exist when we were that age, but it did because me and my cousin used to go onto internet chat rooms into like under specific to topics. And I won't say them because it's not worth bringing up now. But you go in there and you would try to get thrown out, so you'd just be offensive to people and you'd be a knobhead and you get chucked out and you or oh, you get people riled up and you get people going oh and, and you go, you'd be sappy and people laughing to each other. Ah, isn't this dead funny? Because yeah. you're getting people to react to you and you get chucked out out. It's badge of honor. Laugh and you then go. Anyway, what are we doing? Let's go carry on with our champ manager save for another hour instead, or let's go yeah. to the shop and get a can of coffee. Because it's not a person, is it? Yeah, no, it's, it's an a, entity. It just, it's a non-existent... It people don't realise you're an actual person. That yeah. exists now, but now you've got access to it to different people. That was random faceless people who were people, but it was far more random and far more faceless. Now you can, because of Twitter and Facebook and YouTube and all that, we're active, we've actively encouraged people to give their opinions and it's so it's opened up this forum where every opinion's super valid because everyone's opinions are so precious and so amazing. Yeah. So if you fucking hate someone, you you now just you can now just tell them it, you, you, and you can spread hate messages and all that, and they're the ones that hurt when someone just seemingly fucking hates you yeah. for no reason. Back in the nineties, if your ma or your dad hated like some celebrity, like my dad with a visceral hate that I imagine is based in some sort of homophobia, hated Dale Winton. Like, he just hated Dale Winton. But Dale Winton never knew. Because <laughs> my dad had no way of getting in touch with Dale Winton. Whereas these days, Dale Winton would have found out several times that Michael Rowe hates him. But you could, couldn't you? Because you could, he could have gone and found Dale Winton, shouted at his house, been a prick to him, but no one does it in the real world. Yeah. They want to do it from the fucking couch, don't they? And like, oh, I tell you what, hey, if you take that away, it never happened. <laughs> 
<laughs> but people can just be like, they but can most, literally be like, I've just finished this shit and I'm going to be a bell end to someone on Twitter. Saying, but no, most people aren't like Adam. But most people wouldn't say it even in public. You probably would be more inclined to say it in, in, in public. I, I, it's funny, there's a saying I got taught, taught and it was random, in a, working in pubs, you pick up some amazing life advice. But it was like, if someone's got a problem, a real problem with something, they wouldn't tell you. So if someone takes the piss out of you for your, for your haircut or you for this and whatever, it's just... Banter, when banter used to be, used, used to be a lighthearted and not a really cringeworthy expression, yeah. if it was a real problem, people wouldn't say it to you, which sounds really counterintuitive in our world now. Yeah, because it's, yeah, yeah. it's now, that seems being weirdly a dishonest, but someone had a real problem, you wouldn't, you would never talk about it. You, know, you wouldn't skit someone for something they couldn't control. Yeah. Whereas you would take the piss out of other things. Whereas that's what's happened. The internet's allowed everyone to just be like, I can just say loads of dead horrible things about people at all at any given moment. It's the out of blueness of it. You can be having the best day yeah. in your life. When we have it, and it's hard when you've got kids, I think it makes it even worse because you're on your phone a lot. We're all on your phone and everyone's got it, but you don't realise if you've not got like an active... Probably doesn't have, most people's social media experience is not this. It's just a thing for you to view. It's, it's actually just a passive experience. It's just a window into something. It's not back and forth. You can be playing with your kids and you'll pick your phone up and you might then get lost on Twitter. We all do it. Yeah. But then you've just got some random person tagging you in. And, and for me, it's when someone says something inaccurate. So they might call you out for something and say, you're this, you said this and you're horrible and I hate you and, and, tag, and then they're tagging other people in. Like they're trying to get you in. in on, oh, yeah, that, that's, I, I can't let that lie. I can't have people be wrong, about particularly about me. If they've got the wrong end of the stick, I can't have missing. I, I, any point in the day as well. You could just yeah. be having a lovely moment and you just check your phone well, and then... Not to go dark on it, but my son said to me, we're on holidays, eight years old, and he just, he got a bit upset and he was like, you... You ignore. You're always on. You're always on your phone. <gasps> you you you, what, you you pay attention to your phone more than you pay attention <gasps> to me. No, honestly, heartbreaking. And I had to say to him, right, mate. I promise you tomorrow. Well, <laughs> wake up. In no, 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 swear to Christ. Like I said to him, like tomorrow, we, it's me and you. We're having a me and you day. You won't see me phone tomorrow. I promise. And that's that's even on a good day. But there's a bad day when someone cuts you to the core with a nothing thing because you're just not prepared for it. We can all take you know, like being in a fight. We can all take a dig, but even a heavyweight, world-class heavyweight boxer, if you catch him with a fucking dig when he's not looking, you'll knock him spark out cold. Yeah, yeah. And that's what you've got to deal with, and that has the knock-on impact to your life is the, is the hardest part of that, it. That thing about like when someone says something inaccurate, that is, for me, and we, we've spoken about this a couple of times. I try not to talk about it because it's not funny, yeah. but that Mackey's thing from the start of this year when yeah, yeah. I like didn't get into yeah, Mackey's yeah. and it caused this murder because I've done like a stupid tweet. The, the story that that has become. So what actually happened there was a 50-odd-year-old woman who was pissed off at the end of her shift didn't give a shit that I was having a panic attack in the rain. That's what happened. The story has become Adam Rowe volleyed a 12-year-old who worked in Mackey's <laughs> because he wouldn't give him a muck floody five minutes. And I can do fuck all about it because if you if you go to people who are going, you're trying to get a fucking 16 year old sack because she wouldn't give me the McMuffin 10 minutes early, you fat cunt. If you go, well, no, actually, I didn't do that because that's not, you weren't even there. I was there on my own and I was, I, you can't do it. And that that's what drives me mad more than anything about I that. Had this, I had this last week. In fact, it was the build up to the Liverpool's last game of the season and ITV went, you want to come and do a, an interview for whatever, good morning, GMTV, whatever yeah. the hell it is in the morning show. And I went, yeah, fine, got up a, Five o'clock in the morning, go down to the docks, got interviewed, and the narrative was everyone's telling everyone to stay away from Anfield. So, so you know, just so it's not bad PR for Liverpool. The managers come out, the captains come out, the whole club. It's a big push, and they said to me, you know, what do you, what do you think about it? But and, but it was it was led down the line of this is all basically a piece of just say, you know, be sensible and you know and and, and what have you. And it got taken that I'd basically said. Like, and I, and I, wanted, I did it three times. Did it live, and then did a post, a post, a pre recorded one for now, and then I did another one on the guy's phone for social media. And at the end of one of them, I said something, it was a slip of the tongue, like, all real fans will be sat at home watching it on the telly anyway. And, and then I was like, <laughs> and someone tweeted me, and I, and I, I sort of kicked off a little bit because I was tagged in some of the posts, and it died off as everything does, everything moves on. But some random lads, so I, I, this lad, I got tagged in a tweet, and it's like, this lad ha said he hates Scousers or something, and I was like, what? D -d 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 right, can I just back up here a second, what? I, I thought, you must be talking about someone else who's tagged in. I went, sorry, what are you talking about? He said, you went on this video and said that you hate Scousers. I was like, and I thought, no, you fucking didn't. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't, in any way, shape or form. I'm also, 
a fucking scouse. <laughs> I don't know whether you know this. You're the worst type of self-hating oh scouse. But like, but it, and, and I, I was like, I, I do, a, do a bite at this because like I need, I, I need to put that straight because I can't have that being spread. And then it comes down like this lad was like, uh, clearly this is just some lad who, who pretends to be scouse. Because he, he, he turns out he's from Witness. He's yeah, he from Witness. I let it go because he was asked. Um, but like, <laughs> uh, but you know, that, but they're the kind of things that you you would, and because you've got, you come to a point where you've got, you have to protect, you know, yourself, and you don't want false information. You, you had it. You know, we don't, don't want to dive into it too much. But you gave a Liverpool player. Uh, 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 no, I, I gave Naby Keita a fucking five out of ten. We do a play rating show every week where we give them ratings based on the game that's based been on the played. game that I've yeah. seen. So I go in there. And I fucking, we've done a show for two and a half hours. We go straight into it, not thought about it, just fucking cameras rolling, blah, blah, blah. I give him a five out of 10. I'm a racist. I'm like, what? Like, and but now it's a thing on Twitter where people will literally say, and Nabi Kaita, two out of 10. And, then, and I'm, I'm a racist to fucking loads and loads of people. It's mad, isn't it? It's fucking crazy, but it's a got- thing. Everyone wants to be liked. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. That's why it hurts you yeah. because everyone yeah. wants everyone to like them or to think yeah. they're funny or to think they're knowledgeable or whatever the fuck it is. You can't. So all you've got to do in answer to your question is go. Would I take advice off that person on Twitter? No, then don't take the fucking abuse. Yeah, yeah. That, that's exactly what I try and do, and I also try and what what you say is like be forgiven with it. I what I always do, and I've had a few times. I get it in me DMs when it comes in me DMs. I reply, but I go dead nice, and I go. I don't think you know what really happened on the day you're talking about, lads. So here's what happened. If you still want to date me after that, that sound. Every time I've had a conversation with someone like that, they've always gone, you seem like a really nice lad, and they always calm down. And I always say to them, sort of initially, in like a, I'm going overly nice, and it's sort of like a little dig, because I know it's going to get to them. What I try and think is, anyone who's sending someone abuse on the internet, someone they don't know, for something innocuous or something that they don't really know the full story of. They're not having a good time. <laughs> they're having a shit time at the minute. They're unhappy. They might be depressed. And I always say something along the lines of, I can understand you're probably a really angry person at the minute. I don't know what's going on in your life, but I hope you get the help that you need. And I feel like it just like gives them a little shockwave and it just stops them. Yeah, I had no one really thing- well-rounded with a really happy home life, a good <laughs> career, going, eating healthy, had a not great drinking. Game. Like, <laughs> no one, no one who is, you know, Patrick Bateman flexing in front of a mirror with a super hot wife and a super hot body is taking the time to DM Adam Rowe about his McDonald's. Babe, experience. come like, back uh, to bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hang on right. a second, love. Yeah, yeah. Fucking Rowe. The, the yeah. worst one I had was nothing to do with what we've already spoke about was a fussy thing. I made, I put a tweet about Lovren. He'd made like an absolute catastrophic edit in a game. And I was like, it, it, it wasn't even like a slagging. Like on your show, when I can be in more context and I'm clearly being jovial and joking, I'll go in a bit more on the players. But it was like, like, Lovren's just not good enough for this team. You know, the sooner we get Gomez and Matip back, the better. Uh, blah, blah, blah. It was really, like, one of the most innocuous, he's had a bad game, that that keeps happening. I got a... I don't know whether I even told you or you about this. I got a f- proper death threat, like, uh, to me Facebook page. So I'd done that on Twitter, right? He'd found me Facebook fan page, and he messaged me going, how dare you give any of these lads stick? They're all part of the squad. If one of them fails, they all fail. I will. F- you don't know who I am. I've I've just got out of uh, a mental hospital, and I'm just looking for some cunt like you. And then he took a screenshot of my website with all my tour dates on. And he was like, I know where you're going to be on these dates. And I sent it to my agent. <laughs> and I was like, Christ. I was like, what do we do? And she was like, look, it's an empty threat. It absolutely is. And you know it is. And obviously, looking back, you go, it obviously was. It's just someone blowing off steam. But she was like, but we will let every tour venue know. Like, I'd sent her photos Could of the guy. you imagine at Cardiff? <laughs> Ladies and gents, welcome on stage. Comedian Adam Rowe, first minute in. And all you hear from the back is, the fucking DJ! <laughs> <laughs> and then just, and then comes down the middle of the and then, and then. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Honestly, so there's, there's, yeah, there's, there's just gangs of weirdos out there. And the problem is what social media has done, it goes back to the thing about the comments, it's empowered knobheads, more, morons, and just people that you should be... Look, you, you're, 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 there's a bit, some of your stand-up bit where you talk about this, and, uh, and so I, don't, I would never do it justice in certain ways, but there's just certain people who you're meant to buzz off 
<laughs> and, and there's people out there who have got stupid opinions of it. Because again, I worked in pubs for a decade and everyone, every group of mates has got that one lad who, who takes the lion's share of the abuse because he deserves it because he's an idiot. And he's the only way you can put him right is yeah. to go, shut up, you dick. And I had, a, you know, and you used to, in years gone by, you would punch that person in the arm, maybe face, depending on what you'd had to drink. And yeah. now they, those people... Don't have friends anymore. It's Dicko, innit? Yeah. We've all got one. We've all got the name. And it's, all, it's always a name like that. It's always an O name. Um, or it's an I name or an E name. One of, one of our mates the other day went to wet the baby's head. He's just had a baby. And he invited all the lads. And he invited Dicko. And he told Dicko only that it was fancy dressed. And he turned up dressed as sore. <laughs> yeah. Fucking These hell. guys used to get pilloried and they were a laugh and they were laughing stuff and you'd hold them up and you loved them really so you were a bit gentle with them and you'd maybe make it up to them these people now more and more don't have real friends because you know these people that we all know they're very lucky to have us aren't they to be honest these, these, weirdos, <laughs> these weirdos that we've kept around and invited to the parties for all these years but no these now don't have actual real friends they f but they find other little niche weirdos who have those niche weirdo opinions online and it emboldens them to have stupid opinions yes. and then, and, and and you know and and so they've now got these weird subculture groups where they think that and this is how flat earth has come about in it is that instead of someone going shut up you knob yeah. no it's not a real yeah. thing they've, they've found got thousands of other people it going, used to be no, the one is, right. dickhead in the pub and now that dickhead in the pub can talk to the dickhead from every other pub in the country at the same time <laughs> <laughs> dick in the pub dot com yeah, 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 right. yeah it's like yeah it's, it's, it's like literally like you found an app where instead of like meeting people to, to date or to find love or find sex, you found other morons <laughs> who to share who to share your stupid opinions and that's how you match. Oh, he's got a he thinks the earth is flat and uh, and Boris Johnson's doing a great job as but oh yeah, he's a match. We can have a we can have a little chat <laughs> online now. Yeah, oh my god. Yeah. Oh. And he's got a Subaru as a profile picture as well. <laughs> <laughs> shall we uh, shall we call a little interval? Like. We need to have a way from our sponsors. What a what a wonderful first section that was. I feel like we've uh, solved all the problems of social media. If this gets enough views, I reckon social media is going to become a much nicer, happier place for everyone involved. That's how that'll work. Um, and if you like social media, you might also like manscaped.com. That was a clunky fucking <laughs> segment. <laughs> and if you like things, you might like this thing. <laughs> if you like things to go more smoothly. Um, oh, there you, there you go. What's happening, guys? Today's episode is brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped are the best male grooming products on the planet. They've only just launched in the UK. They've sent me and Dan a razor each. And I've got to say, proper top tier stuff. This is the best razor I've ever used. It's the first time I've ever shaved me balls and not snagged the bag. The good aren't I get the little, you know, I get a little bit of like over the pubes tub and I nick that. I've just been using an old head trimmer. I've used this and you're like, oh, that's a slide, that's a glide. So you don't get that sting in the shower. Yeah, it's horrible. Like, when you get like a, a little cut on your bag and then you get a bit of ball sweat seeping into the cut and you get sweaty sting. Mm, keep talking sexy, Adam. <laughs> That's why Manscaped has redesigned the electric trimmer. This is it. They've engineered the greatest ball hair trimmer ever created. It's the new and improved Lawn Mower 3.0, and it's just been released in the UK. It's smart as fuck. This is their third generation trimmer. It features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce manscaping accidents. And when I'm saying this is the best razor I've ever used, I'm, I'm not messing, you know. I know it's easy to say that when you're getting sponsored by a company, but it, it's it's really, really, really good. It The battery's amazing. It lasts for an hour and a half, so you can shave for longer. It's water resistant. You can use it in the shower. You don't have to be shaving stood over the toilet anymore. It's sick. One of the coolest features is the LED light. It illuminates the way as you shave along so you don't get any nasty nicks. And they've just got an upgraded 7,000 RPM quiet stroke motor. The nicest bit, you get a load of kit when you get this sent to you. But the charging stand is charged by USB and it looks sleek as fuck. So you're not getting any whinging from your partner, your missus. It's going to sit in the bathroom. You're going to be proud of it. Look, don't take our word for it. If you're listening to this, watching it, pause the podcast yet. Go and order one for us. And they don't just sell razors. You can get all sorts of male grooming products from manscaped.com. And experience it for yourself. It, it's really, really good. Your balls will thank you. This is the important bit. 
every listener of Have A Word gets 20% off. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code WORD. That's Word, W-O-R-D, at manscaped.com. And make sure you use that code, otherwise they won't know that we sent you. That's right, 20% off, free shipping all over the UK and in America, actually. But you can use the code word, WORD, that's W-O-R-D. We should have picked a different word, because code word... Weird. Just sounds clunky, doesn't it? You're not thick. You get it. Word. It's weird. Time shave. to shave those balls. Should I shave yours now? Adam, should I shave yours? We'll just do that now. We'll show you. Oh, don't. You're meant to flinch. <laughs> Pev. We're back. Uh, it's time for some features. We've got some features. We've got a couple of Woodgy Riders, which we do a lot of. I know you do a couple of them on your podcast as well. We should give that a plug, mm. actually. So tell us uh, where you can find it, what it's called, and whatever. The Matrix Page podcast, it's generally speaking. It's similar to what you guys do. It's generally me and Chris just chatting shit about life, the universe, and everything, periodically with great guests, and Adam's been on it as well. <laughs> um, no, that was great. It was a really good one, actually. No, it was, the one we did with Jamie Carragher was one of the one of the really good ones. We had yourself, uh, Liverpool musician Jamie Webster and Jamie Carragher on a little spell pre-lockdown when we had to get back to... We couldn't get guests anymore, so it was like, doing it ourselves. Amazing. Yeah. It was uh, dead fun, that. It's a really, really good podcast to do. And, like, I imagine a few people who watch this will be from your fans and also there'll be a crossover with me having on your channel a bit and there'll be a lot of of football fans on. But if you're a fan of ours, if you're one of the regular Have A Word listeners and you like Chris and Paul and you're not really interested in Footy or Liverpool Football Club, the Mage X Payjack podcast is... 99% 99% non-football in it. Yeah. Like, you might hint at it because it's ridiculous for you not to at times, but it's well worth checking out. Uh, even the ones with the footballers and the other Liverpool based people, not necessarily football-based, and go and check that out. Yeah, How many unless days you're, you unless record- you're a Tory, please don't. Right. <laughs> Tory, don't bother. How many days are you recording? Now, you've got you've got the Red Men TV and, and your podcast. I mean, is it literally a, a nine-to-five, Monday to Friday? <laughs> not nine to five. No, no, no. no that's not. No, it's like it's you like, don't give up a nine to five to start another nine to five. It's eight to eight, really, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Like we we do MXP. You've got your own channel as well. I've got. We both got Twitch channels. So Red Men as well. On top of that, like it's it's a full time fucking job. Like. Red Men's a proper. It's a full on media company. So there's everything. to, you know, I mean, there's those and there's, there's, we've got three other members of staff who work on all that. So it's. There's always something going on. You could have, but you could you could fill 24 hours a day if you know if you had the the manpower to do it. So yeah, yeah it's it's it would be like, worth. Do you know? Do you know? Do you know li- at some point when I go and do an episode, I mean, we'll clear this with you guys. You should come and sit in on it because you'd love their setup. You know, just the studios. Like, Mate, you're like, doing what we want to get to. Obviously, yeah, different. Totally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You've got our old wallpaper and everything. It's great. Wait, is, we this actually, old, is this the same one? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The textured one we talked it? about your 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 t- t- channel when we were talking about what we wanted this to become. Yeah. We want it to be your podcast and your show, but for fucking nonsense instead of footy. Yeah. You've nailed it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we want to get really rich. And that's why we're doing our feature, Celebrity Net Worth. Yes. So we've sort of done stick. this once before by accident. Basically, you'll notice Dan has a laptop in front of him. I'm not allowed a laptop because I've got undiagnosed ADHD. And you'd have broken the keyboard. You might have fucking <laughs> smashing the table before. But I started just one episode. Dan was just talking for a bit too long for me to concentrate on. <laughs> so I just 40, started... 40 episodes. I that. just started Googling celebrity net worths. So I don't really know what's about to happen here because he's prepped a bit. And mainly Carl has prepped a, a chunk of this as well. Uh, what what are we doing? What you, Can you tell us? You haven't got a mic. Yeah, um, yeah. I've got loads. It's all right. So I've got you've got loads. It? Okay, well, we'll do another one in a bit. With I want to see what you got. I... I went on celebritynetworth.com. The official website as well. They and, check your bank. And I would suggest <laughs> that going down some of this, it's bullshit. Because some of these people definitely do not check their bank account and it's in million dollars. But I, I we're going to go off them. Well, net worth isn't just your capital, is it? It's like your assets as well. Oh, look yeah. at me with words there. Yeah. That was sick. That and I, and I'm, not, I'm not sure all of these people's accountants oh. would agree with the fucking findings. <laughs> Like, if you went to celebrityaccountantsworth.com, they'd be like, shut the fuck up. It's I a little bit in it. Like, anyone in this room has got is on it. Almost certainly not. Do you not no, reckon? Not a fucking chance. Paul no. There's. there's Ancient no. <laughs> net worth. I can imagine if an. It's, e- a, it's a suggested Google search. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Fucking hell. You know you've cracked it when you type your name in it and wife, wife. comes up straight afterwards. 
<laughs> so no, it's not there. Always wants to share. For, for the crazy girls thinking, maybe I can be his husband's <laughs> wife. This is, is bad fit. We don't need to do the celebrity net worth for these guys. We could just get them get the banking apps out and we'll have a little fucking <laughs> comp. Um, get it out and it just goes wah, wah. <laughs> it's, it says mine is up to a million dollars right. and that is accuracy yeah. oh that's <laughs> definitely <laughs> anywhere yeah, yeah, yeah. probably always will be <laughs> he was driving Jade's Fiesta for the first month, <laughs> six months of the year uh, the game is just who's worth more classic fucking like FA your card drives right? are we gonna is it winner stays on sort of thing um you well, can just discuss it between yourselves. I just want to know who you think's worth more. Okay. Elon Musk Him. Or, or Bill Gates. Oh. Tesla's own Elon Musk. Electrical wizard nonce, didn't Elon Gates Musk. Give half his fucking and Bill Gates. Gates. Away, didn't he? No, I, mean, I think so he's going to. And the foundation and stuff. Didn't he give loads to the foundation? I, I think he's going to when he dies. Geez. That's what I always heard. That was the rumor going around our school. No, there is like a charity movement, isn't it, to give away a massive chunk of your wealth? Because he's trying to microchip he, everyone and control the world. He's now a yeah. philanthropist, isn't he? That's the, like that's what he's now. He's not Bill Gates, Microsoft anymore. He, he's fucking that. So, yeah, but you know when they say philanthropist, they're still worth at least thirty billion. You're like, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I gave away a hundred. Yes, like, you're still <laughs> bigger than Peru, though. In terms of <laughs> your wealth, your fucking GDP is massive. Shut the fuck <laughs> up. Yeah, but Elon Musk is like the Man City of this game, isn't he? Bill Gates has been fucking winning titles for time in the billionaires I mean he was number one baby he's Man United this is fucking Elon Musk being Elon Musk terrifies me you know I've seen him on like Rogan's podcast and there's something fucking wrong with him yeah like he's he's obviously that you know that thin line between madness and genius mm. I think like depending on what day I think Tuesday he's a genius and the next day he's like killing something yeah. You know what I mean? He's definitely nailing it, but he's like, I want to solve the traffic problem in LA. Yeah, he's built underground tunnels. tunnels. You're like, and it probably worked, but it does sound mental until it's until we've seen it work. It sounds like the Dark Knight Rises to me. Like, it sounds like he's getting everyone under there to press a fucking thing, and then everyone's just going to be buried oh. underground. Oh, 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 Urge run to tunnel underground. Before we carry on, can either of you do any impressions? Not under pressure. No. See, well, when you're nice different. and relaxed, just at a bath. <laughs> <laughs> Keep like, it down. <laughs> oh, you think Papa <laughs> Bath is yeah, yeah, like a few candles, get a bit of Kenny G on, and just start just start making out some impressions. Like, yeah, we were saying yeah. before, I can do musical impressions. No, he can't. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know Mark Morrison, Return of the Mac. Didn't know Mark Morrison was black. I don't even hear them. <laughs> Okay. Do you know what I mean? Do, do you return on the back? <laughs> this is why Adam's never going to be in, in the competition with Elon and Bill for like Yo how lad. many billions. <laughs> what the fuck? That was your come face. For why, did you do, why did you do him like as the Undertaker? You're well? lying. <laughs> That's me, I lad. I know, but it's not that way. Like, you know what I mean? I know. You lie to me. Am I wrong? <laughs> Nelson Mandela to, to song. You lie to me. <laughs> <sighs> I know all the ways to inform her. You know, turn around and remember later. I lick your bum bum down. Fucking but the, but ledge, a, mate. But the actual words. Yeah, I know yeah. you do. And it's a starter in his come down with me meal. Mm, <laughs> go on. Inform her. I know she put her down. I lick your bum bum down. They went words, Chris. They <laughs> were like, I was just saying so fast. He went over your okay, ass. I tell you what, then. <laughs> could you. Could Fucking you, quailer. Could you say them just slowly? You don't have to sing them. Just tell us what they are. He's doing bum bum down. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now that you say it. Yeah, yeah. I lick your bum bum down. Do you remember that song? Yeah. Mr. Man, Mr. Man. First, first, first CD single I ever bought. Fuck off. Correct. Yeah. That's actually quite cool. Mine, Mine was, was well worse than that. Was All for one, I swear. That's a belt. Nice. I swear. I swear. Oh, where's that little road? And do it as Nelson Mandela and the stars and the sun. I will, I will be there. Return of the Mac. What was your first What tape? Snap. <laughs> it was as well. It was a fucking tape. You oh yeah, absolute. Yeah, yeah, but he's not. That's not fun to him. He's fucking. <laughs> Mine was on a gramophone. And there was a little dog going, what's that, lad? Right. Hey, listen. listen, listen. We'll meet a, again. There's Don't. a reason I said first CD single when I said Such it, because it's not my first single. My first single was was on vinyl. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, yeah, Brian Adams. Brian Adams! Yeah, yeah. Yes, Everything me. I do by Brian Adams. I'm fucking rubbing on the ass. 
He's, everyone had that. How old are you? Number one in the charts for two years. Everyone had. How old are you? Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. From Woolies, he's got that. So there's only two years between you two. Wow, <laughs> he's good at maths. Fast maths yeah, I know he's lightning. He was no, top, I'm not, top of his class. I'm not like it's not the maths that I'm in, like trying to impress you with. Don't know me first. Oh yeah, he single. looks young and I look old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, I get the joke. What Simpsons was your first tape trouble. then? What was your tape? Snap rhythm as a dancer. Rhythm I'm serious as cancer when I say my first tape was rhythm as a dancer. Mine was I can't remember whichever one of these came out first because for a while these were the only two CDs I had. It's Bob either Dylan, Burn by Bob, Usher oh yeah, there you go. or Ghetto Gospel by Tupac and Elton John. I had that on MP3. I mean, you've got that. I'll, 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 like, Carl, will you check for us which one of them came out first? Ghetto Gospel. Hit him with a little Ghetto Gospel. Those are we to follow did, me. Did Elton John duet with Tupac after Tupac had been shot several times? Because <laughs> that doesn't sound something like uh, West Coast rapper Tupac would agree to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's long dead. Right. I was 13. Yeah, but that's mad because that's the, I think that happens you, when you after a certain age, everything once you're in once you're at adulthood, everything feels like it was like two weeks ago. So like that song feels like it only came out quite recently. <laughs> oh yeah, it's still the noughties for me. When like what like the Libertines was about a fortnight ago. Or mm-hmm. Bam was first. Yeah, uh, but Elon- you say like like Elton John hadn't ordered <laughs> Bill I, Gates. I, I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> Elon Musk and Bill Gates is where we're at. He's like, no, shut up, Usher. (laughs) Elton John also did it with uh, Eminem. Remember? With Stan. I I believe that. No, he didn't, no, did he? He did. Elton John and Tupac and and Elton John and Eminem were never in the room together. Like Elton Elton John and Eminem performed live on stage together and did Stan. Wow. Elton John like did Dido's bit because Dido was on holiday in real. Do you reckon so they got <laughs> fucking Elton John. I'm not. I'm Dido's not sorry, yeah. Who should we get? <laughs> Elton fucking John, yeah. Sound. Yeah. <laughs> Someone must really Perfect hate Eminem. Replacement. But like, it was, it's it's. I prefer that version. Uh, <laughs> tears gone cold. I'm wondering why I got out of bed at all. Morning break out of my window. <laughs> You not like guilty a- at all. Close your eyes. <laughs> Don't. I think he was just Even molested me. Good upgrade. Could you put you on my wall? Play that. And then- no, don't. <laughs> For the love of fuck, don't. 11 years ago. But, can we just do one? <laughs> Bill Gates. Bill Gates, 120 billion. Elon Musk, 99 billion. He's got 99 billion, bro. <laughs> But his mental health is one. Uh, Tom Cruise. Yeah. Tom Hanks. Who's worth more? Cruise. Oh, Cruzy. Think Cruzy? I reckon Cruzy. You know. Oh, no. I don't know whether he had to pay like a fucking severance fee to get out of the old Scientology stuff. What? Like membership fees? He bounced, fees? didn't he? Did he? Is he fucked off Scientology? I, I believe so. No, he did you get it in the yearly newsletter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think like, because he was, he was like the face of it for a while, wasn't he? So you had to pay a severage package, like leaving Virgin. Like, I think it was like, yeah. I think he like he maybe like himself out of his like mobile yeah, yeah. phone. I think maybe like the Jews paid a transfer fee to get him from Scientology. <laughs> okay, let's what? let let's let that hang hang. Big transfer news that'd be amazing. <laughs> the theological fucking yeah. Sky Sports news. Breaking news: This lunch error. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He there can do go. fucking. What he's still there. Is he, yeah? He's still is he still there? there? Yeah, but he's seen out his, his, con- his contract. Yeah, he's, and then he's, he's trying to go on a Bosman. He's trying to go on a Bosman. <laughs> he's going to go and play in Japan like fucking Iniesta. <laughs> Have you heard about Cruz? He makes playing midfield for the Buddhists. But like, I, I think if he's still there then and he hasn't had to pay them off, I reckon defo him because like, I reckon he was getting like commission on the celebrities. Getting, you know, like when Jay-Z and Will Smith and that came to Scientology, I reckon it was all down to him and he was getting a little 20%. Hey, you're so fake news. That's unbelievable. Jay-Z's not a Scientologist, is he? He is. Is he? Is he fuck? Is he? He fucking is. Wow. When did they sign him? <laughs> <laughs> January transfer window. Yeah. And he got a free transfer with Bay. Yeah. Him and Beyonce both, innit? No. He's yeah, talking they meant shit. To be get, they were meant to be getting Kanye, but the fax wasn't working. <laughs> 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 Tom... So shit. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. exactly. It's fucking BBC's gossip. That's just a tax fiddle. Laugh. Oh, you got this off Team Talk, didn't you? Not off Sky Sports News. <laughs> uh, Tom Cruise, five seventy million. Tom Hanks, four hundred million. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Get yeah. Out. Yeah. Uh, here's this is really up your fucking street musically. <laughs> Pink. Yes. 
Christine Aguilera. Oh, what are you saying? Look, he's not. There's no jokes about this because this is his genre. See, of Pink music. has like had more longevity, hasn't she? But Christina Aguilera's like beautiful and dirty. Was such like she's probably still raking it in from that. Hey, if she you got paid by how many wanks you had to the dirty video, it's probably it, isn't it? Like, but... <laughs> that is so devastatingly true. I've had a wank. Do you know what's really funny? She was this is this is really <laughs> embarrassing. I've had a wank to that this year. <laughs> Is it even in HD? <laughs> 720p. <laughs> I don't get out of bed for less than 1080, mate. Come I was on. hung over. It come on the radio when I was in the car. Wait, so what, what, what? You're you in the car. On the radio. No, I didn't wank in the car. I waited till I got home and then I was You've like- seen it that many times. Just imagine the video. When you just pull over at some fucking top <laughs> lights for a fucking Tommy Tank. Look, right, we've he, he, he's in park. a fucking food channel on YouTube and you're cracking one up to fucking Christina Aguilera. I was I was radio. hungover. I've told you before, when I'm hungover, my sexual desires are a bit fucking ski whiff, right? So I was in the car, it came on and I was like, I remembered the video. And then when I got home and I was having a little alone time, it popped into my head. So instead of going to Pornhub, I went to Christina Aguilera Vivo. Can, can I just say, do you remember... Uh, and that video was really hot stripper like women doing road works oh, yeah. and yeah, using yeah. like like there was parties when we'd been clubbing when people had put like the like MTV dance on and it'd be four in the morning and I'd be like coming down a little bit and then some, that had come on and I had to leave parties because it got me too horny like, <laughs> you going down yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> dirty little bastard so I, I feel for you you never had a pink wank no. Da -na 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 -na. <laughs> da -na 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 -na. I did sort of fancy pink when I was younger, but it was more like a grief fantasy because my parents had split up and she released Family Portrait and it just did something for me. <laughs> <laughs> he has sympathy works to Christina. You are beautiful. I am Christina. <laughs> She's great since she's thickened out. I fucking love her. She looks like she's like fucking Christine Aguilera squared. <laughs> she's she's the same shape. She's just fucking massive. She looks like she's been doing growth hormone. I'm into it. Fat Tina. I'm a pink fan. I am. Yeah. I'd go and see Pink Live. Can we get him tickets for Pink? Never seen live music. Never seen live I've music. I've never been to a concert. What? Yeah. Wow. Oh, we've done this. I know. Oh, no, that's fine. Right. It's not you know, Swimming with Dolphins, we're all going watching Pink. -na 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 -na. <laughs> that was good. Pink, Pink, Pink apparently two. puts a show on, by the way. Oh, she's an amazing showman. <laughs> she? 200 million, Christina Aguilera, 160. You're quite good at this. Yeah, she's got more longevity. You're annoyingly good at this. Uh, Messi, Christi Cristiano, Christine, <laughs> Christine Ronaldo. Messi. Cristiano I know, I know Ronaldo. Messi. It is. What? Oh, let's have the discussion. Let's have the discussion. What? We can't hear you, Carl. <laughs> Messi's the highest paid footballer in the world. Doesn't mean he's got the biggest net worth, though, does he? What do you reckon, lads? That's, a, that's an interesting one. Messi's got his own like clothing brand and stuff, hasn't he? So he get, he's like, he's like Messi footballs. Ronaldo has his own rights, though. He negotiates his own rights with Juve, didn't he? So yeah. I reckon Ronaldo. And he's had the transfer, a couple of big transfers as well, which Messi hasn't. Yeah, I go, I go Ronaldo. Oh, that's a good point. I'm going to stick with Messi because I'm arrogant, even though I know I'm wrong. Uh, Messi, 400. Christina, I can't say it. Christina Aguilera Ronaldo. Christina Ronaldo, 500 mil. Apparently. He's not the first billionaire footballer then. Here's one. Fat Ronaldo or Zlatan? Who's worth more? I reckon right now it's Zlatan. But I reckon if you, like, had drawn a line at the end of both of their careers, it just looks like he's spent a bit of money since he finished. <laughs> <laughs> if you take away Brazilian oh. Greggs. <laughs> like, he's, like, he's on the lemo, isn't he? The lemo? Not yeah. if you've seen the size of him, he's not. Oh, yeah. No, but, like, there's some fat lemo heads. Is there? Not proper, not proper ones, there's not. He's on the lemo. I'm telling you right now, he's on the I'm lemo. I'm not saying he's not, mate. I'm just saying that he's... You know, he's probably on something. He's, yeah. But he's allowed to be, isn't he? Yeah. He's worth a ton of money. Yeah, he's not allowed to fuck. party. Like, yeah, he's just been... I can't imagine he's very rich. I mean, I reckon he's comfortable. Yeah. 
But I can't see him being sh- him being stupid. I reckon he's more. St- like he hasn't paid his mortgage off because he was spending <laughs> on other shit. <laughs> like, why is it with Brazilian footballers? They're amazing, but they're like Ronaldinho looks like a guy who you'd find like round the back of a pub, like <laughs> with a fucking ponytail. <laughs> fucking still got it, Ronnie. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to do step overs with a fucking beer barrel. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, I reckon. I reckon it's Latan. Yeah, I don't know about you guys. It's got to be Latan, surely. Uh, this does sound yeah. like a red herring. I can't imagine why it wouldn't be Latan. Yeah, it's Latan. One ninety. Fat Ronaldo. One hundred sixty million dollars. Wow. So I don't know. I just don't see that that can be true. Um, who's your? Who's the footballer you most would like a beer with? It would have to be someone from the past, wouldn't it? Because all footballers now are just. Boring, aren't they? Oh yeah, you definitely want the alcoholic borderline racist, don't you? To make it interesting. Oh god, yeah, yeah. You want to go out with a you want to go with a nineties footballer, you know, who've just who, who, you know you, you'd rather go on the lash with like a, a Ray Parler than you would like a let's pick a pick a midfield an, an average English midfielder. Sorry, Ray, I do know him. Um, <laughs> um, you know, from from today, like Danny Murphy. We're like, oh my god, it's like would, would you? What would you? What are you? What are you getting from? He that? was always all right, wasn't he? Seems sound, nice. Not a fun point. Tony Adams is going to be a better stag uh, too. Yeah, yeah, that Arsenal team from the nineties. You just wouldn't be on for days, would you? You know what I mean? I used to work somewhere where Gazza used to come in for a drink, and the answer is Gazza, by the way, because he bring he brought a fucking parrot into the restaurant one time, <laughs> and he literally came in, then five bellies came in, and they were just launching this parrot around the restaurant, and like people were fucking running away and fucking all kinds. And then I was a chef at the time with KP. And he went, yeah, quick, yeah, and yeah, like later. I was like, what's going on? He's like, Gaz has got his pants around his ankles, he's falling asleep on the toilet. And this was when he was not drinking at Everton. So we all went in and basically had the fucking look at Gaz, like fucking pants around his ankles and all that. Sorry, so you it's missed Gaza. the word there. You all went in to have a look at Gaz's knob. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> what was that? That's the, we all went in to have a look at Gaz's knob. Um, was it, how was it? Yeah. <laughs> Is this just when he had peroxide blonde hair? Yeah, yeah. Did he have peroxide? <laughs> no. He's Gaza seems mental enough that he could have dyed his pubes peroxide blonde. I don't think it would have been him dying it. I think he'd have got five bellies to do it. Do you know as well, like when you said, oh, Gaza, it'd be Gaza for a pint, wouldn't it? You're like, yeah, not now though. No, not when now. It's not the not saddest now thing. Now it would be in Gaza history. for a can. <laughs> just like, Saza, get Gaza around and just try and help in any way you can. But Gaza, like in early noughties, was probably a good laugh. Yeah, you go with him now and be like, should we have a should we have a lime and soda, mate? Yeah, should yeah. Like, you want to put no look at table. Let's have a lime. Let's have a lime and soda in a chat. Yeah. How are you doing? How are you keeping up with things? Fuck are you okay. Yeah. You're not taking him for a pint. If like you that? walked into your local with Gaza, everyone would look at you like, dude. Yeah, what come are you on. doing? Yeah, yeah. Don't bring him <laughs> in. George, yeah. Best, yeah. George Best ashes under your arm, like and you know what I mean? Just to fucking hammer it up. And he's all there, bright purple, like, for <laughs> fucking you for you. Like, oh God, he's ruined the night. Good. <laughs> That's just so depressing. Yeah. Uh, should we do the have words? Yes. Uh, so we've got some other words. What should we do? We've got one uh, that's uh, whinging about international travel and his missus. We've got one who's having a bitch about his ratty mate who's been a bit sly online. And then we've got one who is messaging from Australia who's whinging about uh, domesticity with his missus. What do you fancy? The guy, uh, the guy who's whinging about James, who's whinging about his mate being a bit of a rat, seems quite... Yeah. Go for it. Right, okay. Time James says, all right, lids, got a word, uh, got to have a word for you. Just call me Joe. Can you have a word with my ratty cunt of a mate? I think he's from Liverpool. Uh, this girl started messaging me on Snapchat and I worked out that she knew my mate. I messaged him. And he asked me if I liked her. I said, not really, but I'd like a blowjob or a shag. I also mentioned that she wasn't really that fit, which is uh, the opposite of what I had said to her. The horrible twat then screenshotted the message and sent it to her. I then received so many angry messages from her that I had to block her. The worst thing is that she lives around the corner from me. All the best lids love the pod. Oh, there's a rat in the kitchen. Any that is different levels. Fucking drop kicking him. Like proper. I don't mean I mean like proper like the rock. Get the rock in to drop kick him into next week. That is because it's not even like because I bet that's one of those things where you go, ah, ah, ah I'm gonna do him over him. We've all got that again, that mate. When you're out in town and do any into cock block you, you know what I mean? Just because he's just a bit sad and desperate himself. But that's just sly. 
That, that is, is genuinely sly. That is King Snake. I just feel behavior. really sorry for the girl yeah, who's yeah, being yeah. messed around like this. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me more, new Adam that I've <laughs> never fucking met. I just feel like, you know, you need to be honest with women and say what your intentions are from the stars. And if, you know, if she's up for it, then great. And if she isn't, <laughs> what are you doing? You're all right. <laughs> What's happened? <laughs> what the fuck? I just think you should respect women. Thanks for listening to the podcast. No, but like, you know, he's saying to her that he wants something serious just so he, she'll suck his dick and then he's going to leave her be. And then, and she lives around the corner. So his plan all along was to shag her and then see her after shagging her. I reckon, if anything, he's got away lightly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm literally gobsmacked. Look at your fucking face. You're such a contrarian. Just because I thought I knew where this was going to go. I, can I just say, like, when anyone who's calling him out, like, what, so you, there was an attractive young lady, and you said you thought she was attractive, but you said privately to your mate, you weren't that arse and you were just going to bang her. Well, that, sir, is disgusting, and you embarrass me and all men. Anyone, any guy who calls out a bloke for that is a fucking hypocrite, because we've all chatted some private shit. No? I'm on this island, am I, guys? With my fucking active fry, you're letting me hang out here on my own. No, this is the conversations that that lads have. I don't think I don't think lads being lads and chatting is representative of a man's true feelings about things in general. Because you can't be like, I am yes. I've fallen for this girl. She's she might be the one. Lads don't talk like that. It's like, oh well, you know, she's just this thing, and you know, yeah, I'll have yeah, a bit yeah. of a laugh and blah blah blah. But it's just shady on air. Like that's like no one imagine. Ugh, 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 it makes me feel really uncomfortable. Yeah, the grass, the grass is that. a knobhead. Like, oh. ugh, like never speak to him again and, you know, jump him with all your mates, just fucking batter him, put him in hospital. And, uh, yeah. Is that better? Yeah, yeah. It's not, <laughs> just feels like we're back on track. I know a lad who got in quite a bit of trouble because he texted his mate saying, uh, just something like flippant, like, oh, I've seen this girl today, I'd love to shag her, whatever. And he'd left his apple watch at his beards. <gasps> She's seen the messages. My, the, and he the, had to be he, like, she she texted him like, uh, "You seen a bird day? You wanted to shag her, did you?" And he he was he was like, "Oh, because oh. obviously she'd seen everything. She'd seen all the messages." The only thing I've ever had to come close was two actually. There's one where I, I I was I was texting. I text this bear. I'd rang this bear to ask her out, and she was like, oh, "I'm going away for on holiday. And maybe when we get back, we sort something out." And I text me mate. Uh, I don't know where she's. Just don't know where she's done. She's going away. Don't know whether she's interested, blah, blah, blah. And sent it straight to her and was just folded it up with, yeah, probably ignore that. That's fine. And then never spoke to her ever again. I was of utter shame. But we always, I, I, I messaged my cousin and said, you all right? And he, t- he said, no, I'm, I'm, my head's done it at the moment. And I said, but why? And he said, and he, t- and he texts back. Now, apparently he texts back, um, me mum, me dad, me best mate, and me missus take your pick as to who's doing me head in the most. I don't know that he texted that because he did not text it to me. Um, oh! and, it, so, and he does not know <laughs> to this day, because this is early days of text messages. Like he's, got, he, he's like, did you, he rang me, he was like, did you get that text? And I was like, no, what text? And he was like, oh shit. Because oh, there's no one else he's texting. He's picked all the important people in his life in one hit to slag off. <laughs> he's absolutely it's, uh... texted to at least to at least one of them. Shit. It's a dangerous fucking place, that though, isn't it? Like the text messages of the worst emails. Emails are the absolute fucking worst because you can't take them back. At least on WhatsApp, you can delete for everyone. Yeah, I love that when you see delete for everyone and it basically means someone's going to go, what was that? And you're like, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, t- I'll uh, fucking was, take nah. that and send in shit on email that shouldn't have been fucking sent on email. Yeah, the, I did it uh, once when we worked in a bar together. I don't know whether I was working with you actually, but uh, I think you were texting me going, uh, are we going out for a bevy or whatever? And I text me boss saying, I'll just ring in sick, it doesn't matter. We just can't go near my work. And she was like, you're not having a, a night off for a month. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> email's so hard because you do it, now that you do it on your phone, I've put so many kisses on the end of emails. <laughs> just like, yeah, serious, like work. So like, yeah, we really look forward to speaking to you. And then it's gone. Sometimes I get in the habit of doing a couple and you're like, oh, it looks such a fucking bell end. I do kisses to everyone now. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just I never got the kisses thing. I remember going out with a girl once and she was saying, I go, I said, what, why, why do you put, those kisses on the end of everything. You know, this this was the text message pre WhatsApp, pre emojis universe. And she was like, so everyone knows that I'm sound with them. So if I leave it off, 
he un- this like me mate, I'm actually I've left the kiss off, so he knows I'm raging with him. And I was like, what yeah. the fucking hell have I walked into here? Right. I, I, that's, I, ha- my that's first, how a lot of people think, though. My first serious girlfriend, who was by any definition an absolute psychopath, used to put five text kisses, and then she would scale it depending on the mood she wow. was in. <laughs> she gave a five star review. Oh my so god! Like, like if it was just a normal day, five, and then if like she was like, let's say I was like, oh, I know, said we were going to do something on Thursday, but could we do Friday instead? Because me and Carl want to go out for a drink and there's fussy on on Thursday. She'd go, yeah, yeah, no worries. Three. And you're like, oh. I like that, you know. I think that's sounds. She's created emojis for herself. It's like, you you now know how she's thinking about it. Where you'd be sat there going, oh, she sounds pissed off, but she's give me five fucking stars here. What the fuck is she actually? No, she, ne- no she never left it ambiguous like that. Like, there was that's always. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's what you want. That's boss. You want it. Really you want to be able to go, all right, she thinks I'm a cunt. This you want a fucking I'm number? Okay and see how, f- how far you get yeah. with this? No, no, no. No, but she might be onto something with the Elon Musk. Fine line between insanity and genius, isn't there? Maybe she's cracked it because even em- emojis were created so you can try and convey tone in what you're doing in your, in your messages. But all they are really, like I know there's a lad who, who's worked for us who's 20, 20, 21 now. And for him, the <laughs> thumbs up is a really dismissive thing to give someone. It's like, yeah, Sam, whatevs. Whereas it's like, for us, it's like, yeah. Good on you because I lived come from the David Hasselhoff generation where a thumb up was like what you know you know something's a God yeah someone's giving you a thumb up I That's love incredible. you marry me <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> see a thumbs up to me is is the end of a conversation it's just yeah yeah, yeah. it's an okay I can't be asked like yeah I, that was funny or like I, like like message I received like, yeah. yeah just I've seen that but I'm not replying because I can't be asked you did it once. Where I don't think I knew the meaning of the smiley face, and I used it, and you went, "What? This is when we were getting the podcast going. The one with eyes but no face." Or, or <laughs> I sent it to you, and you were like, "What? What do you mean?" And I just thought it meant, oh, "I just can't be asked." I've seen your message. <laughs> <laughs> My eyes the have eyes looked when at your got message. no mouth. Yeah, yeah. That means like I don't know what I want to say. Like it, it's like awkward, isn't it? Isn't oh, like I a, just oh. thought it meant like oh, I'm just, I'm just, I'm yeah, done, it's I'm like, done with talking about it's, it. Just, it's also like but, it's like. Have we not just proved the point in this? Yeah. Five star ang- anger rating on a text message. There's no ambiguity whatsoever. If you've got a three, you've done something. You, you, you've done something wrong. If you're getting one or none, fuck me. It's not. It's a get round there and solve the problem immediately kind of situation. Yeah. 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 I do love Listen, you. I know the person who's delivered it hasn't really, you know, set you up for life on this. You know. Uh, yeah. But. But. Oh, she was right all along. It was all good. <laughs> was, she good in, was she good in bed? No. Oh, well, then, yeah. No, Cra- no. What, crazy and not good in bed? Yeah. Oh, that's oh, the yeah. worst type of crazy. At the end of the relationship, right? This is. How long uh, were you with her, Adam? About a year. That's oh, the wow. whole point of the crazy ones. Right. <laughs> At the end of the relationship, this Mirrors is. everywhere. <laughs> this is almost verbatim. This is as verbatim as I can remember it. I'm not going to leave anything else on purpose. He said to me, So go on, lad, tell us what happened. Why did you break up? And I went, well, do you know what it was, lad? Towards the end, she just became a cunt. And he said, no, she was a cunt at the start. And I went, yeah, she was actually, wasn't she? And I've never thought about her since, apart from when she turned up for the gig with her now husband. And I did a story about the night that we broke up. And the story was, (laughs) I, I don't want to say it. You've done it on the pod as well. Yeah, you've, done okay. the, you've done it on the pod. Let's leave it there. Actually, can I ask a question on that? But she the- sent a message going, really nice to see you at, at the live show. One kiss. Cuts. So every, it was it was no. Because this is, this, I always think about this, about about, about comedy. And I, actually was, I, I, I was thinking about with the Eminem stuff before. And Elton John, you, when, you, when you slag someone off and you've got no choice, you're going to, bump into them and you, you're doing stuff now where you go up on stage and you've got stories where you're going this this dickhead said this to me and blah 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 you now live in a world where that person could legitimately turn up to a show or you could meet that how do you how, how, for how, Dijon <laughs> <laughs> how is that because I, I there's things that I'd, I'd be like this is a great story to tell on the podcast but I'm like I could bump into a member of their family walking in in the in the as there. Okay. You've basically got to not, not think about it because otherwise it will ruin the prospect of. You've got to just be like, ah, it's, if it happens, it happens. Because okay, otherwise, so you'd stop doing stand up. I first of all, if I still know the person, I won't do the story without going to know I'm doing the story. Or if I do, and this counts also if I don't know them anymore, 
for example, who we're talking about now, who I've done jokes about, I will never name them. Like, because then you can get into libel stuff. I will always make it, my ex-girlfriend did this. And then if they get pissed off, then all they're doing is letting everyone know that it's about them. I'm not, I've got several ex-girlfriends, so, you know what I mean? Like, show off. It could be about, (laughs) well, by several, I mean two. (laughs) (laughs) It could be about any two of them. Um, Yeah, so I, I don't try and be personal. Uh, and even more so now that I've seen the really how much like to come a bit full circle is what we were talking about earlier the negativity of social media and people do see what you're saying it does get get to you than that so I try not to be overly personal uh, a lot of the time and I like if, it, if a story's about someone I'll make sure that unless you know you will never know who it's about yeah no, so I always find that because there's that bit if you ever watched the marvelous Mrs. Maisel and that uh, the way she builds her comedy and that and it's about her mum and dad and then the mum and dad see it and they're horrified of it. I was like, I'll be yeah having that situation. We've done it in the podcast and I tell the story from my childhood and then I go, my mum and dad tell me they've they've watched the podcast that way. You go like, yeah, I probably won't be, probably won't oh, be doing that. Even more the- with with the podcast because we do so much and it's never planned, it's never scripted. We end up saying things and you're like, even then, like there's elements of that where you, you have to just do an edit. Whereas material is often way more thought through. Maybe you ad lib something, but it, then it's lost the in the moment. Time you do this material. will be on YouTube for a long time. Yeah. It does make you clock it like Christ. The first time you do material, if you do make a mistake and make it obvious if it is, it was probably seen by 80 people. This will be seen by more than that six seconds after it goes out. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I. <laughs> what did give me a panic attack a couple of weeks ago was we speak about our personal lives quite openly on this podcast. Like I've had a wank to Christina Aguilera's dirty video this year, and um, the the other week, Jay was like, "Me missus was like, do you know my nanny's been listening to your podcast?" And I talk about Jade on this, talk about everything. Jade's nan watches the podcast on YouTube. Hey, Jay's nan. Dirty. It's gonna be awkward at Christmas dinner this year, isn't it? <laughs> Dirty. <laughs> Shall we? Uh, on that note, call, call it, it a an pod. absolute length of a pod. Uh, lads, been an absolute. Oh, no, pleasure. it's been fucking great. Thanks for coming in. Thanks so much. Hey, have we got a song? For we the have audio got a version? song. Um, so we play out like a local artist on the audio version of the podcast and just give them a plug, and we can't put it on YouTube because then we get like advertised and fucked over for that. Yeah. Um, Thanks for explaining. I'm, I'm, I'll trust to you. you, you yeah. looking at me. <laughs> you're, it looked like you were explaining that to me, but you're doing it. For, I, I presume you're doing it for the audience. For other people, yes. Yeah, it not, did not sound like master, you were explaining to the... me how YouTube works, <laughs> uh, which is funny. Uh, this uh, track is a bit of hip hop. It's by Marvin Adama featuring China Lily. Um, he's on YouTube. He's got a YouTube channel. Uh, the YouTube channel is called Crown Freedom. It's Black Diamonds by Marvin Adama featuring China Lily. Thanks very much for coming on, lads. Thanks for coming on. If you are listening for the first time or you're watching for the first time, you can get an extra episode every week on patreon.com slash haveawaredpod. If you want merch, you can go to haveawaredpod.com. Now, if you've only joined for the second half of the episode, we are giving away. We made three of these hoodies. There's only one more. So me and Dan have got one each. There's one spare hoodie. We're giving away that hoodie and two free tickets to any show you ever want to come to. Subscribe on YouTube to this channel. Ring the bell and tell a mate to do the same. Send a screenshot to show you've done it, either to email or on Twitter. And we're going to pick a winner in two weeks' time. Uh, Thanks very much for coming in. Yeah, Loved it. Loved it. Cheers. Bye, Felicia. Bye, Felicia.